guys. Hey. Okay, so earlier today, I actually had the wrong time for my live with Astro 5D. So I already did the live with Astro 5D earlier today. Um, so since a bunch of people signed up for this live, um, I decided to actually do one just by myself at this time since there was a bunch of people who were signed up for it. Um, hey, how are you guys? So yeah, I'm just gonna end up doing this one solo. I know it says I'm with Astro 5D, but we ended up doing it earlier today. So that's gonna be on my YouTube uh, tomorrow. Hey guys. So, oh, thank you. So I'm just gonna be answering some questions. Um, I'm gonna post the one with Astro 5D tomorrow and then this one probably the next day. So guys, I'm sorry, Astro 5D is not gonna be here because we did it earlier today. Um, I had a completely wrong time frame. So I'll just be here solo since there was a bunch of people signed up for this. Um, and I'm gonna answer questions. Uh, so that'll be fun. It'll just be me and you guys. Aw, thank you guys. You guys are so sweet. Um, so if you guys have any questions, aw, oh, thank you. Okay, so it is gonna be on YouTube. Why is the Lion's Gate so emotional? To be honest, uh, I am not really too, too, too familiar with the Lion's Gate portal. I see what a lot of influencers talk about, but I've never he heard it really talked about anywhere else except social media um, from like, you know, social media gurus. So I don't really have much information except that would be me just repeating what I hear other people say. Which, you know, you guys know me. You know I don't like to do that. That's not the way I like to present information. I'm like, I like to have the information from multiple different sources that I trust and then present it. Okay, um, opinions on the Monroe Institute. Government ploy to find people mm, or legit good interest. Huh, good question. Um, I do think that the Monroe Institute uh, was for a reason. I think it might be a combination of both, like most things. Um, I think that, you know, the government did use Robert Monroe, but at the same time, that was also really important and necessary for the collective to learn how to remote view. What is your point of view regarding the dragon in China? Oh, I have no idea about that. I'm sorry. Aw, thank you. You've been able to cure your depression. Wow. And that's really what it is. It's like, you know, a lot of times people are feeling depressed because we're just not in our purpose, you know? And it's not that there's anything wrong with you or your brain. It's just, you know, you have to... Why do these Masonic and demonic celebrities only mock Christian Christianity? I mean, because it's safe, you know? That's more of a social question. It's safe, you know? Um, it's safe to mock Christianity as opposed to any other religion because other religions, they would be called bigots. Um, do you view religion as part of the matrix that people get sucked in? Ooh. Yes, um, I do. Uh, not saying that there's not a lot of legitimate information in religion, but I do personally uh, believe that organized religion is, you know, a means of control. Um, I believe like many things, they take information that is important and real and then use it to, you know, limit people. Uh, which is what, I don't know if you guys ever read Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. He channels the devil in that book and the devil says that r schools and religion is his greatest tool for keeping people sucked into lower vibrations. Um, but of course, there's a lot of teachings and things that work, which is the reason why it actually resonates with people. Let's see. Oh, you've been binging YouTube content all week, thanks. What am I reading right now? What book have I been reading? Oh, I'm. I've, I've been going over the Divine Matrix again um, because I want to start creating some content on that book, so I'm rereading it. Yeah, we can only critique the stuff we know. That's true. 
Um, do we think the earth shift will happen in our lifetime? I do, but I don't know if it will be like this physical thing or if it's just going to be something that we kind of just ease into. Have I read any Drunvalo Melchizedek? Um, so I actually have one of his books here. I have his Mayan book. Uh, and I do have the audiobooks for The Flower of Life, but I haven't really dug into them yet. Oh, yeah. Happy full moon, guys. Oh, thanks for the gifts. Okay, what is my take on Ashayana Dean? Okay, this is a controversial one. Yeah, I love these uh, controversial questions you guys are asking me. Um, Ashayana Dean. I, okay, so I really wanted to give her, like, a chance, even though her information to me uh, doesn't feel good. Usually, I tend to go towards information that makes me feel like this feeling inside that feels right, you know, like when I listen to Dolores or other people, I feel like, yeah, you know what, that resonates. But um, when I listen to Ashayana Dean, I feel like, uh, like, I don't know, I feel like my spirituality is somehow being violated. Um, and also, I just, as you guys, Ashayana Dean, she's, um, I don't know what she's doing now. Most of her content is old as hell. So I don't even know if she still does things um, or if she's still alive. But um, yeah, she is very knowledgeable. Uh, my thing with Ashayana Dean, and I really gave her a chance. I listened to six hours of her speeches um, which was actually hard to do because the amount of information that she dumps and the way she presents it is almost like a computer. So it doesn't go in easily. So I really had to watch some of them twice. However, you guys know that the way that I usually present information is this person says it, this person says it, this person says it, this person says it. I like to match up what is linking up in a lot of different places. Now, Ashayana Dean's work is literally the opposite of what everyone else says. And then she says that that's because everyone else is false light and deceived by the dark and she's the only one with the right information. That doesn't sit well with me when someone says, you know, everyone else is wrong, everyone else is worshiping the devil basically and the dark matrix and everyone is stuck. Oh, thanks for all these gifts, guys. You guys are so sweet. Um, but that's my opinion on Ashayana Dean. However, I think she has, thank you so much for these gifts, guys. You guys are so sweet. Um, and the comments are going so fast. Um, but uh, yeah, for Ashayana Dean, there is a lot of information that I do really enjoy uh, there's definitely some things that she says that really sat with me. Like, you know, she talked about like black holes and white holes and she talks about, you know, a lot of stuff that I do think there's like everything, legitimate information in it. There's a new Dolores Cannon book to, coming out. Are you serious? I did not hear that. Where is my t-shirt from? I don't know, somewhere cheap probably like a forever 21 or something like that. <laughs> uh, oh guys, thank you. Do I think the Grand Canyon was a location for Egyptian pyramids? Okay, so um, one of my friends who, he's a creator on Instagram. He doesn't do the TikTok thing. He feels too, I don't know, just not for TikTok. Um, his name is Johnny Has Lost It on Instagram. Uh, he's one of my friends and he told me about the whole Grand Canyon thing uh, a while ago. So I've never looked into it personally. This is only based on that. I trust that he's a good researcher, but I haven't looked into it myself. But what he said actually is that it had something to do with the last solar flash and that all of these, uh, like, I don't know, not religions, but all of these like tribes and ancient beliefs and all of these people came from all over and met in the Grand Canyon and that it was actually not like a part of Egypt, but it was actually migration that happened. But I never really looked into it. So I really can't say um, what I believe about it. That's just what I've heard from someone that I know that's a good researcher. Let's see here. Oh, you guys are so sweet. 
Do I believe that NPC souls are like dog souls, like a collective soul? I do. I do believe that. I believe that they are part, they are consciousness, they are part of something, and they are probably on a evolution path. They just haven't got to the point where they have an I am consciousness yet. What do you think of quartz, crystal quartz? Have you heard of her channel? No, I haven't. Oh, Greg Braden. I love Greg Braden. That's the Divine Matrix book that I was just talking about. And then Bruce Lipton. So I haven't read any of his stuff. He has um, those books about, oh gosh, I can't think of what the name is. But um, no, I haven't started his book yet. Um, do I do full moon affirmations? Uh, sometimes. Uh, yes, this will be on YouTube. Um, sometimes I do full moon affirmations. I don't think I did one this time. Uh, is there a heaven? So from what I've come across is that there's paradise, of course. So in the spirit realm, there is paradise. Um, and there is levels of, there's basically on the spirit world, you know, we have lower, middle, and upper astral. And they say the middle astral is basically like a paradise. And the upper astral is even better. Um, so the most advanced souls experience something even better than this paradise, but they say paradise as opposed to heaven, because paradise is a perfected version of earth, basically. What are my thoughts on Mormonism? Um, you know, I am not Mormon. I've never been, so I don't know. Um, although a lot of their information does come from similar things, you know, they do talk about a lot of similar stuff. I just am not so into the methods, you know, of most organized religions. Do I think Dolores Cannon is Queen Elizabeth like that guy said? No, I have that guy blocked. That guy also made a video about me. I don't want to address who that guy is. Dolores Cannon being the Queen Elizabeth is the most unhinged shit I have ever heard in my life. I cannot believe that people actually believe that person. Like, literally, he also said, did a video about me. And, you know, it's ridiculous. What order of albums, what tool albums should you listen to? In what order? I mean, Anima is the way. Anima, Lateralis. And just go from that order, you know? I mean, listen to Undertow too, but you could skip Undertow. But I know, you know, the real metal heads don't like that. Um, hello. <laughs> All right. Do you do your Akashic Record, did you do your Akashic Record meditation again? What do I think of Jason Shirka? Um, okay, so Jason Shirka, uh, I really like the information he shares. Um, I do like the information that he shares. I actually, there's interviews with him on Gaia, which is different than what he has on social media. And that's how I found out about him was he was on Cosmic Disclosure, I think. And then he was also on Beyond Belief on Gaia TV. And I really enjoyed those interviews. There was like incredible information in them that he hasn't really shared on social media. So he claims that he is a part of something called TLS, the light system, and that basically they are like the light of like this underground thing. So like the CIA or like the Illuminati or something that they're the light version of them, that they're basically this thing and that there's like this 400 year old rabbi that lives underground that runs it. It's so crazy. Um, so, but I actually do like him and I do like what he's talking about. And I hope there is a secret organization of the light. I really hope in my heart that that's true. I don't know um, if I believe it. Um, do I resonate with Barbara Marciniak? Yes. Um, very much, especially her older books. I don't know any of her newer stuff, but the book Bringers of the Dawn, I actually listen to go to sleep uh, most nights. Also the book Earth, I've read, it's like amazing. So I highly suggest those two books. I haven't read her other books. Let's see. Okay, what are your thoughts on attempting to meditate, communicate with your higher self and your soulmate? Okay, so obviously I believe meditating and talking to your higher self is the way to go. As far as um, connecting with your soulmate, um, I wouldn't really suggest trying to channel your soulmate. 
but you can maybe on a heart level do it and just be like, you know what, like I'm connecting to my soulmate's energy, hoping that we meet, but I do everything through my higher self. I don't work with any entities or deities or anything. Every time I meditate or every time I ask for advice, anytime I ask for protection, I always ask my higher self. Um, I don't, you know, I like Palladians. I like all these things. I think they're interesting. I think they're cool. I don't communicate with any of them. I only do my higher self. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you guys. You guys are so sweet. Have you tried the emotion code? I haven't um, heard of it actually. I have to look into that. Let's see. The Pleiadian agenda is amazing. Yeah, that's um, Barbara Handclaw. I do like that book too. That book is interesting. She channels Lucifer in that book, which is also very interesting. Let's see. Only why only your higher self because I only trust myself <laughs> because um, you know not to be creepy and scare you guys but um, uh, energies don't have to tell the truth there's the same way that humans we can lie entities can lie and that's why I don't communicate with any entities because sometimes people believe they're talking to a spirit guide and they're actually just talking to some lower astral being that is feeding on their energy. So not to be scary, not to scare anyone, but actually um, I have like a long time ago, like 10 years ago, I revoked any contact with anything that no entities or beings would be able to contact me only through my higher self. If they want to talk to me, talk to my higher self. Valiant Thor. So I actually haven't um, dug into any of that. I am familiar with the ideas from Valiant Thor, but I haven't read anything. Psych K is a subconscious repro repro reprogramming technique I recently learned about. Have you heard of it or tried it? I haven't. I have to look into that. Scared, LOL. What's real is scary. All right, nice tone, guy. <laughs> how do you guard yourself from that um from like other energies and stuff you can always protect yourself with your intention and white light do i sync my life with my feminine cycle uh, i mostly do my life right now is pretty um casual so i don't have a lot of syncing to do um but i do i do very much believe in that and i try to kind of eat in a certain way and take certain supplements on certain weeks but you know like everything else you get caught up in life how do you know you're communicating with spirits or your higher self i've never experienced it um i've only like set the intention to do that um and i don't call upon anything you know i don't call upon any energies um what are some methods to contact your higher selves i mean meditation when you're meditating you're pretty much connecting with your higher self. And then so I saw, gosh, what, what book was that in? I think it's in the book called The Pleiadian Workbook. And they talk about how basically your energy body, you know, is around you. And as you heal, work through trauma, look at your shadow stuff, reflect on things, you know, do energy work you know, use white light to heal yourself, visualize a vacuum sucking out all dark energy or dark spots or stagnant areas, doing stuff like that heals your energetic field. So they say when your energetic field is like pretty clear, your higher self can connect with you in each chakra. But when it's not, your higher self can only connect through a specific chakra that's opened. So like say, you know, your third eye, your crown is closed. So you're not gonna receive information from your higher self through there. You might receive information from your higher self through your gut, actually. So that gut feeling sometimes is because your higher self is like, hey, don't do that. Hey, that's not a good idea. But you can't hear it in your mind. So you hear it in your gut or your heart. So your higher self is always contacting and connecting with you. You get like a feeling in your heart, that's your, that's your higher self giving you that information. So the more that you kind of heal your energy field, you're gonna get more information through your third eye or through your crown or you know, your ears are actually a part of your throat chakra, I'm pretty sure. 
So, cause listening and talking is both a part of it. So you might get a little ringing in your ear, stuff like that. So, um, Jen, will you be mad if I expose the antichrist? I mean, I won't, uh, confirm or deny it for you. Have I ever astral projected? Yes. Um, it's not easy when I did it. I was on like a super, super, super detox of everything, like only eating green vegetables for weeks. Um, and when I did, actually someone pointed out to me that more so I was not um, astral projecting, that I was mental projecting. So mental projection is basically like not your like soul leaving the body. It's like your consciousness leaving the body. I don't know. You really have to look into it. It's like, I didn't really see it as much of a difference, but some people have pointed out to me that there is a difference. Um, with the mental projection, I think is actually, you know, a lot more easy. I'm confused. What is your higher self? Okay. The higher self. So we're here. We're a piece of our soul. So our soul, we're just a tiny little piece of it. Um, the rest of it is in, you know, the spirit world. And the higher self is your whole self. All the lives you've lived, all you've done in the spirit realm, all your experiences of every life. That's the higher self. It's the true self. We're just a tiny little piece of it. So really, your higher self is just you, but not just in your human form, in your full form. Is the live canceled? So um, me and Astro 5D ended up doing it earlier today, but since a lot of people were already signed up for this um, and they had it like, they wanted to register to get notified, I didn't wanna just not do anything. So I decided to just come here and do it by myself, um, but the Astro 5D one will be on my YouTube later. Let's see, what do I think happened to John Benet Ramsey? How can I heal my energy field and aura and make vibes higher? Um, regular life things like eating, exercising, meditating, um, good stuff like that, you know, regular stuff to make yourself feel better. Then on the psychological level, you're gonna wanna look at your childhood trauma and forgive those people because no matter what anyone has done to you, like, this is all part of a learning process. It took me years. I know I had to forgive people for years. Some of these people, it took me six, seven years to forgive. Not since it happened, six, seven years since I thought about forgiving them. And then those years, you know, not even all the years before that. But it's like, you really do have to forgive people because if not, you just have to do it all over again. And do you want to really do it all over again with these people? No. How do you do the forgiving? Okay, so I do the forgiving. First, you have to do it consciously, like in your awake state and be like, you know what? Maybe my parents didn't know any better. And maybe they didn't do this because they're bad people. They did this because they were so damaged themselves. So first, you do it in a rational way. First, you do of like, oh, this person harmed me because they were harmed when they were younger and this is something that they've developed. You know, why was this narcissist abusive? Well, that person experienced abandonment, trauma, these things. So you try to also rationalize first. After you've done the rationalization of like, logically, why did this person, why are they this way? They're not this way because me. They don't treat me this way because of me. They're treating me this way because of what happened to them. And that's all they know. So after you do the rationalization of forgiveness, which is hard, especially with, you know, SA stuff. I've been there, trust me, forgiving those people is not easy. But the thing is, what are you gonna do? Be attached to them for a hundred more lifetimes? That's even worse. So after you do that, then you do the energetic release. But you have to really do it consciously and be ready to forgive them first because a lot of times people just do like cord cutting. Oh, do a cord cutting. Yeah, okay, you did a cord cutting, but you didn't learn the lesson or forgive or anything. So it did it even work. After you rationally forgive, and you don't have to say like, oh, they're a good person. Oh, and for something very important here, don't forgive them to their face. Do not forgive them to their face. Forgiveness is for you. 
Don't tell those person you forgive them because all you're doing is opening the door for them to hurt you again and letting them off the hook. They need to do their work on what they did. It's not your place to let them off the hook. It's only your place for you to find understanding of why that happened, why they would have treated people this way. After you do that and you feel okay with that information, then do the meditation where you cut the cord with them and you break the contract. I have one on my uh, YouTube that I recorded. It sounds weird because it's the way that Dolores Cannon teaches her hypnosis. So you don't like do, it's not like one of those like lofty meditation voices. It's kind of like weird. You speak in like this like pattern. Um, so it sounds a little weird, but if you want, listen to it on my YouTube. It's called uh, br meditation for karma with those who have hurt you or something like that. It's the only meditation on my YouTube. Do I remember any of my past lives? Yes, I also have a video on my YouTube about my past lives, um, which you should watch. It's really interesting. Um, so as far as my past lives, they were all like horrible. Like after you remember some past lives and not like ego past lives where you're Cleopatra and you think you were like a queen and now all of a sudden you're just a peasant in this life, it must be a punishment. No, like the real past life shit, like they're horrible. It was horrible to be alive back in the day. You know, all of those past centuries were a nightmare. So then you really realize after that, um, you're like, you know what? We got it pretty damn good. <laughs> we got it pretty damn good. I'm sitting in my apartment, got my cute little light. Life is good. Um, as far as the past lives, I mean, all of them. I was like a, like, I don't know if I would say the word here, but an, like an SA slave and human trafficking stuff. Like they were horrible. And then the ones that weren't like that, it was like being married to rapists. Like, because you have no choice, because you had to marry them. Horrible lives, horrible. No one could burn us at the stake. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. And in the times I've done the hypnosis on other people, which like I said, I only really do on my friends, um, and I haven't done it in a while, uh, every, like a bunch of them have had situations like that where there was like a burning at the stake or hanging or these things because they had intuitive uh, powers. So that's why a lot of them felt very scared to talk about those um, psychic abilities that they have in this life because they had literally been killed for them in the past. Astral projection advice. Um, I would do mental projection. <laughs> Drop the skincare routine. Okay. So the mental projection. Um, okay. So visualization and imagination are kind of like two sides of the same coin. They're like the feminine and masculine energy of one thing that's happening, which is images in your mind. So imagination is basically kind of like you're a little bit more receptive and visualization is a little bit more outward, like you're projecting the images. So visualization is a great way to actually start. So sometimes if you're doing um, a visualization, you can just visualize yourself doing it. And then eventually if you really visualize it and get into a deep state of meditation, all of a sudden you become like an observer and all of a sudden you're not consciously observing, not consciously creating. All of a sudden you're kind of sitting back and being like, damn, we're really doing this. Oh, and just ask that person's skincare routine. It's nothing crazy, but um, I do get facials from a place called Bijou Beauty uh, in LA. They're the best. Um, and also I buy my skincare from them, which is this brand called IS Clinicals. Um, highly suggest complex, complex cleanser is the way just get the face wash complex cleanser or, um, what is it called? Uh, the one for skin suticals is very similar. It's called, it's one you'll go to blue Mer mercury and it's a skin suticals cleanser that has enzymes in it that, um, exfoliate.
How do you let go of hate or judgment? Oops. Sorry, I think I accidentally muted someone. I'm like so behind on these comments. So um, I think I accidentally muted someone. I'm sorry if I did that to you. Um, how do you let go of hate or judgment? Um, understanding. You have to understand like hate is coming. Hate is not a like thing of its own. Hate is love that has been twisted. So when you hate, it means that you... There was love and then you've been hurt so you just need to understand that like hurt is not a place to operate from does the third eye mean the same thing as the masonic hand over the eye thing so i don't know if the masons even do the hand over the eye thing or if that's just a bunch of people online saying conspiracies and getting shit all mixed up because they don't read the things themselves and they just repeat what other people say so because that's what I kind of see, you know, happening. Like most of these people who do that thing, they're not really like the Masonic people. They're more like the entertainer, Illuminati type shit, you know? Um, so the third eye, though, is like actually a gland in your brain. It's real. Do you recommend a QHHT session to help you find your purpose and gain advice from your higher self? I do, but I don't think that that's the only way. Um, you could do it also through meditation or really just listen to your inner self and be like, I feel really good when I'm doing this and lean into that. You don't need to know your purpose right away because sometimes you're not ready to know. If I would have found out my purpose five years ago, it would have meant nothing to me because I didn't have all the knowledge that I do right now. had dreams that later became true. Well, that's because time is simultaneous. So sometimes when you're asleep, you're actually accessing like when there's no time. Sorry, I am so behind on these. I tried to share your videos with so many people to help them wake up, but they can't watch. And you know what? You don't have to force anyone. You know, everything happens at their own pace. Um, so everything happens at the time that it's meant to. You know, on my live earlier with Astro 5D, you know, I told him that basically, you know, the first time someone kind of started telling me about certain conspiracies, um, that ended up being a breaking point into my spiritual awakening. But when I first heard them, I got so mad at that guy. I cursed him out. I physically pushed him out the door. I pushed him. So don't try to push people to wake up on your time frame because everyone has their own time frame. Can I talk more about implant souls? I have a very vivid memory of being here. So implant souls, I'm not sure what you mean by the implants. Um, do you mean like the walk-in situation? Aw, thank you. Oh, hey, Alex. Aw, thanks, guys. <laughs> If you want to show your friends the content, I don't know, start off with like this. I mean, I don't know where to start. I mean, all of it's a little out there. Um, the Antichrist stuff usually gets people because it kind of goes across a lot of different belief systems. People really like that one. Um, it's kind of like a hot topic. Thanks, guys. What do we do when we've woken up to the world? What's the next step? So like say after you have awakened, um, you just need to maintain your high vibe because most of us really are just here to be, you know? You're just here to be. You don't have to do anything. So like what you do after you've kind of woken up to the thing, the way that things are, forgive people, learn to have compassion, you know, learn to, you know, help other people. So, 
could you do a series on the secrets of the Vatican? They will take down my account. They literally come for me no matter what I am posting. It is so ridiculous. For me, whenever I post a video, my videos all go under review. If I use hashtags, it like three, four, five hours for the video to go up. I have to delete it and post it multiple times. Like if I did the Vatican series, oh my God. Oh my God, they'll take me down. Um, are you gonna start a Patreon? Yes, I am. I am gonna start a Patreon. Um, I'm gonna do a couple things first. I do wanna get all of my series on YouTube, um, but maybe I'll start one sooner. We'll see. What do you guys want on the Patreon? That's what I'm wondering. Thank you. Oh, thanks guys. I've started to meditate and feel my body get cold and wonderful um, and feel that you're free. What is that? If your body feels, um, if your body feels cold and you're meditating, maybe you're just kind of meditating real hard and you're kind of like a little bit like not so much in your body and a little bit more, you know, in your higher chakras and your like more body lower chakras are, you know, uh, just like not active at that moment. I don't think it's anything weird. How do I recognize blockages and release them? I mean, we talk about it on an energetic level, but the real shit is like your life. You have to, the blockages are the shit with your parents, the shit in your relationships, the stuff with money, the stuff that's really here right now. You know, it's not about like, a lot of times people like to worry about the energy stuff, but the real stuff is like, heal the issues with your parents, heal the issues sexually, heal the issues with, oh, I think you're back. I see you, Dr. Panties, I see you. You are not muted. <laughs> but I did mute someone accidentally, so you might be back now. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, when it comes to blockages, just really, it's about the real shit that you experienced. You know, you can do all the spiritual stuff in the world, but if you don't forgive the parents, work on that, if you don't f f figure out the sexual stuff, the shame, the guilt, the self-worth issues, that's the real thing, you know? And those, when you really heal those, the other energetic blockages, you don't even have to worry about that because we are here for real life. Are aliens amongst us? Do they shape shift and look like humans? Yes. <laughs> aliens are among us. Um, and they can shape shift and look like humans. Uh, but also a lot of people are aliens and don't even know that they are. Oh, thanks, Dr. Panties. I really love your name. It's hilarious. Uh, I love that too. I love saying the most spiritual thing you can do is be human. You are right, Mama Kiri. I got here late. Will this be on YouTube? Yes, it will. Have I seen a shapeshifter in real life? Yes, I have. And it was extremely scary. Um, if you go to my YouTube, there's a video about it in my alien UFO experiences video. Are aliens fallen angels? Um... I mean, if they're fallen angels, then some aliens are angels, right? So, I mean, there wasn't the word aliens when the Bible came out. So, what's my YouTube handle? JK Ultra Programming. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the word aliens didn't exist when the Bible came out. Is Elon the Antichrist? No, Elon is not. He wishes. <laughs> um, yeah. Oops, sorry, almost... I might have muted someone else by mistake. I don't know why I keep accidentally doing that. Um, you think it's awesome I'm a Tool fan? Oh, I'm a hardcore Tool fan. I've been a Tool fan since I since literally I was a child and that sober video came out on MTV. Oh, I'm lagging, guys. If it's lagging, this will be on YouTube. Do I believe in God or the Bible? Um, I, my perception of God is more the source energy. So I do believe that there is like an infinite source that we are all part of and that we are fractals of. 
Um, so I do believe in that. In the Christian sense of God, of the Father, I don't. Um, so yeah, like, and I don't know, maybe it's that because me and my own father never got along, but this whole idea of God being the father, I'm like, yeah, we're going to worship a father that abandoned us. Yeah, that sounds familiar. <laughs> no. So, um, no, I don't believe in the, and as far as the Bible, um, I mean, I believe the Bible is it's a book, um, and I believe that there was real information in it, but I also believe that a lot of the uh, Bible was, a lot of stuff was taken out, a lot of stuff was put in. All the women in the Bible either had to be virgins or whores. There was no in between. I don't know why, um, I just wouldn't, I don't sign up for that. I do actually have a Discord that I never, okay, I will post the Discord. I never did something and I have to go because there's someone who on Instagram, I have to go through my Instagram DMs and find this person. If you're here, let me know. Um, there's a person who actually had like some type of thing to do on the Discord to make sure that no one put hateful com content. Like there's a thing that you can put like filters and she knew how to do it and I wanted to put that first just to be safe, you know, because I'm not gonna be monitoring it. So if people like kind of post like bad stuff on there that's just like harmful, um, I just wanted a couple of like buffers on a couple of topics, you know. I don't want anyone putting anything like, you know, uh, hateful on there. Glad you don't have a biblical perspective on God. Yeah, thank you. Is earth a firmament? I don't believe it. No, I don't. You guys want to know my uh, ideas on flat earth? <laughs> no, I don't believe in flat earth. Okay, so this is my perception of it. Uh, and I know a lot of people... Um, I listen to the flat earthers. I follow a bunch and I watch their videos um, because I'm interested in what all different types of people say. I follow Masons. I follow people who, um, I follow a girl who's a demon witch that works with Lucifer. I like to hear what other people are believing and the stuff that they're saying because I like to see what matches up in all different types of things. I'm not saying the earth is a globe either. I'm not saying that either, guys. Um, what I'm saying is that the, the world is a hologram. So, okay, so, um, okay. So when humanity was at a lower level of consciousness, they believed the earth was flat. As our consciousness raised, we believed it's a globe. Now as our consciousness is raising more, the same thing, okay, 2D, a piece of paper, 3D, a ball. 4D is time. So then, now, if we go 2D, 3D, 4D, we can't go back to 2D and make it flat like a piece of paper. That doesn't make sense. That's weird. No, we're going up and realizing that it's actually not a globe either. It's a hologram. Because as we raise the information, so does the perception of what we're inside of. And... Flat is not a pattern that we see in creation, you know? Um, we see spheres in creation. So like cells, every single thing, a hologram. What is the definition of a hologram? A hologram is an image of reflected lights that holds the entire image within the piece. So you can take a molecule out of a hologram and one molecule holds the entire information of the whole. So we see that pattern inside of us. We see that pattern inside of our bodies where our brain cells, I, our brains firing off looks like other things in nature. It looks similar to branches. It also looks similar to in the cosmos. So we're seeing these patterns throughout. That's what a hologram is. It's where the universe operates a certain way, but our body very much works the same way as the universe does. And the same way we have cells inside of us, we're the cells inside the planet. The planet is the cells of the galaxy. You know, there's this pattern. So this flatness, 
I like to listen to what people say about it because they always have great information and they do point out a lot of really interesting things and a lot of interesting inconsistencies. But I do think personally that they're missing the mark. I don't believe in the firmament thing. It's just weird. Like we're inside of a fucking terrarium. Like that's really weird. Mm -hmm. Have I read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle? I haven't surprisingly. I own it in the audiobook. But I cannot stand that man's voice. I know it sounds so horrible because he's like, like such a great man, but I hate his voice. Like I cannot, when I listen to that book, I wanna stab my ears out. So I have to read it physically and I haven't had the time to read it physically. Oh, do I understand that I'm some people's Bible? Please don't, I'm not, don't worry. I love to help people and share information, but I'm no saint, trust me. I do know what my next series is gonna be. Ooh, you guessed angels and demons, that's pretty cool. Um, but it's actually gonna be dimensions and the levels of consciousness. So, and it's really hard. I actually tried to make it a part of the soul series and it was so hard. And my brain started actually like, I felt like, like I got kicked in the brain trying to explain that information. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to uh, go a little slower and pace it out. But I'm not gonna start the series until September uh, because my birthday is coming up, uh, it's next week. So I've just been kind of, you know, in my Leoness. Uh, I've been out, my sister says I've been on the streets every night. And I mostly have, I've just been busy, I've been hanging out and all this stuff. So I'm not gonna start until September. Also, I wanna make sure that there's like a lot of other content that I've had ideas for. Oh, thanks guys. Um, my birthday is the 16th and um, so so I've had like a, a lot of other things that I've wanted to do content on like the stuff I did with the quantum physics and Sir Isaac Newton and all of these things that I've been wanting to do but it's kind of too much when I'm doing the series because the series takes so much time so I'm gonna take the rest of the month do a lot of standalone content I actually have a list right here of some of the stuff that's coming up I'm gonna do one on the Loch Ness Monster guys because I got some information about that Let's see what else, um, Inner Earth. I'm gonna do a little stuff on Inner Earth. Uh, I'm also gonna do some stuff from uh, The Body Keeps the Score and some other books that I've been reading. What else? Yeah, I literally have a list on my wall of some videos. What do I do for a job? I don't have a job right now. Um, I've been living off of my savings uh, for the last year and a half. Um, so, yeah, the universe has been coming through. The universe comes through when I need it. Will I ever write a book? I actually already wrote a book, guys. Thank you for that question because I've been waiting for it. No, <laughs> no, I actually started writing a book 10 years ago. Um, it's about the, so it's a mix of satire, social commentary, memoir, and kind of just like big concept. And it's about women and basically the creation of the modern woman. And it's a comedic self-help book, actually. Um, it is it is aligned with my like conspiracy content because there is a great conspiracy around the image of a woman. But it's also like a lot of my personal stories. So I'm telling you guys, like you're gonna laugh because it's funny, but you're gonna cry, okay? You're gonna cry because, you know, I put it all in there. Uh, I put you know, all the things that basically shaped me into the woman that I am today. Um, so I'm excited to share that. And honestly, I know, if you guys know publishers uh, or anything, message me on Instagram um, or editors, like legit book editors, because I do need um, that. And I actually took out 25,000 words from this book because it was kind of too, the book was too much. So that's actually, I have like, like a third of the second book already done. Um, and that one is more about the division of men and women. Cause it was like, oh, and then I was like, you know what? Let me just focus on women for the first book. And then the second book, we're gonna talk about the duality. No, it's not published yet. You're in a wheelchair. Why do you keep asking if I'm in a wheelchair, guys? What is wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but I just don't know why you guys are saying that. Because I'm sitting down? <laughs> what am I supposed to walk around as I'm on a live? Don't be weird. 
Well, I don't know why so many people were saying that. That is so strange. <laughs> it's a reference to live by. What do you think of LBL compared to Doorless Cannon? I think that they're both good. So, okay, so let me tell you the big difference between them. And there's reasons why both are good. Okay, so LBL is only life between life. So you do a past life and between lives. Dolores Cannon, QHHT, is past life, between life, and questions for your higher self. So you get a little bit more from that. However, there is a reason why LBL in, sometimes, in some ways can be better. Because in order to be an LBL practitioner, you have to be a certified hypnotist already for years. Now, Dolores' method, anyone can learn. Dolores originally started by teaching only hypnotists. And then she realized that a lot of people who were already trained hypnotists had trouble with her technique because she was breaking different rules um, and doing different things. And it was hard for them to kind of let go of their training. So both are beneficial. An LBL practitioner could potentially be a better hypnotist. However, the QHHT practitioner has more that can happen in the session and more information that you can get. So I like the Dolores method. Thanks, guys. Oh, thanks for the gifts, too. Oh my God, this question keeps coming up. Guys, Dolores Cannon is not the Queen of Elizabeth. Like, please have discernment. I'm concerned if anyone believes that. I'm truly concerned for the discernment. Like, I'm concerned. And the guy, I know I wish I got to meet Dolores too. Uh, my moon sign is Libra. Why are people saying that? Because there's a guy on TikTok who makes ridiculous videos, who I have blocked because he has made videos about me also. And clearly he's got crazy eyes. Um, so a lot of people saw that video um, and then a bunch of people tagged me in it, which made him start attacking me. Um, so no, I blocked him. And he also says that James Charles is Dua Lipa. Like, do you realize? How mental that sounds okay guys what would be the purpose of the illuminati making james charles and dua lipa the same person why would they not have enough to go around like as if there's not enough cute brunettes in the world okay as if there's not enough in the world like hello guys that person also made a video about me and they look alike a lot of people look alike and that's okay because you know there's only so many genetics in the world. People do look alike. Dolores Cannon also looked like my grandma. You know, I wish my, this is, that was so cute. I wish my grandma was Dolores. I love my grandma though, but you know, who made the videos? Oh no, I'm not gonna shout him out. He is ridiculous. He made videos saying that I was insulting him. He's a crazy person. Can you do Illuminati series? Uh, no, I don't know. I mean, let that stay for the people who don't know how to do their research. Oh my God, he also said that Kim K is a male. I mean, we literally saw her vagina in the, uh, the W magazine. Like, you guys didn't see it? Go look at it, it's there. Do I believe that they're celebrity clones? Yes, I do believe in cloning, um, for sure. And they've been doing that uh, for the longest. Yeah, so there is actually, if you guys wanna look into Fritz Springmeier, Fritz Springmeier actually has some interesting information about the clones. So there's a couple different kinds. So there is an organically grown, where like Westworld, that's like very similar. Like the Westworld shit is what the clones are like. There's also another type of clone that is not like grown like that in a laboratory where they actually get a lookalike and they do psychological programming on those people. 
and like break their mind and basically convince them that they are this person and then they use that person basically as a mind control slave. Um, so there is like different types. And that movie Us by Jordan Peele, the reason it's so scary is because that's the real shit. Can I talk about quantum physics? I have a couple videos. If you look at the um, Mandela videos, I have um, some good explanation of string theory in there. Um, see guys, the Avril Lavigne clone thing. Guys, why would they clone the most irrelevant pop star that ever existed? She has two songs that were not even good to begin with. Why? Like, I, it'd be one thing if you guys are saying Beyonce is a clone, but Avril Lavigne, uh, that is the most ridiculous conspiracy for years that I have like been cracking up about. Like, first of all, like nobody cares about Avril Lavigne. If it wasn't for the clone thing, she would be even less relevant. Hater. <laughs> Listen. I was hardcore back in the day, so I never liked Avril because she was always a poser. Okay, bye. <laughs> Maybe she was an experiment. No. What did she do to you? You know what she did to me? She made everyone a pop punk poser when I was in high school, okay? <laughs> what it's about the money she made. But literally, she made less money than like every other pop star. She totally was a poser. Yes, she was. <laughs> Oh, you guys, thank you. What do I think of Beyonce's new album? I have not thought about it at all. Oh, hi guys. I know, I think my, my feelings of Avril Lavigne go back to the year 2002. <laughs> I know, I'm showing my age by using the word poser, exactly. Have I heard of Taos? Um, I don't know, like the city in New Mexico or the religion? Skater Boy, come on, Skater Boy was not lit. You guys, come on, you guys. <laughs> Who's Meg Meyer? <laughs> I don't know, that's who I'm a clone of. <laughs> she must be pretty damn cool. Leo energy. They made money with the young poser crowd. <laughs> You're right about that. I graduated 2007. See, I graduated 2006. Have I read David Wilcox's books? I actually haven't. Um, I've watched some of his stuff, um, but um, no, I haven't really read many of his books. Do you have thoughts on where we go when we dream? Um, so I think it's a lot of different places. So I think that sometimes we are doing work in the spiritual world. Sometimes we're meeting up with loved ones. We're doing all different types of things. Desire Meg Myers. I don't know who Meg Myers is, guys. Or guy, one person. Um... I believe a physical clone is con is possible, but it will not have consciousness. My friend, everything has consciousness. Don't diminish that we are the only things to be able to have consciousness because AI has consciousness and it will individualize and break off into a soul because a soul is I am consciousness. So it means that you're a part of a collective because everything has consciousness. So everything is a part of source and then it evolves, and then eventually it gets to a point where it becomes broken off and becomes I am, and then that's when it becomes a soul. So, of course, a clone can have a soul. It's maybe not created with one, but it can develop one. Thoughts on Weezer? I mean, I listen to Say It Ain't So uh, five days a week, so <laughs> Westworld. I love Westworld. Have I heard of Detroit Become Human? No, I haven't. I've heard people comment it the book for. Sandman. I haven't watched it yet. It just popped up as my um, thing. Yes, I am in my 30s. I'm 33 and next week I will be 34. 
What does it mean when we have the same dream over and over? Um, so it could be a message for you. It could be a memory from another timeline, from a future time, um, or it's something that's like your subconscious mind really is trying to tell you. Oh, thanks guys. Has Gaia TV responded to your videos? Uh, no, uh, I haven't really ever tagged them or anything, but I do want to reach out. See, the person said, I'm 33 too, and we get the Avril Lavigne thing. Yes, yes, we do. Yeah, good Charlotte and simple plan. See, that was not my thing, guys. Guys, I listened to metal, okay? I'm like, I listened to Tool when I was in high school. Um, what are my thoughts on Fergie? I don't know. That video of her doing the flips is hilarious. I like, I can't even watch it. I laugh so hard when you see that video where she's like performing and does the flips while she's singing. <laughs> Metal is low vibe. Uh, dude, you've never listened to Tool then because it's literally about consciousness and ascension. Chevelle. Yeah, that song, The Red. I do still listen to that song. I have it on a playlist. Do I like Bad Bunny? Um, I've heard of him. Um, I don't really know much about it. Do I like death? Like the process or the band? I don't know. Perfect Circle, love Perfect Circle too. Uh, Tool is the most perfect, it truly is. Yeah, System of a Down, that's what I liked. I'm always like, so when I posted that Tool video, I was so excited that that many people that had followed me also enjoyed Tool. What does my neon sign say? It, say? it says, this must be the place, like the Talking Heads song. That's one of my favorite songs. So that song is like a synchronicity for me. When that song pops up, it's like a confirmation. When I hear this must be the place, I'm like, ah, oh, sure. Okay, yes, I'm supposed to be here. Do I read most of my books or listen? Both. Um, I usually do audiobooks first um, because it's just easier for me um, because I can do other things while I'm doing it. And then I usually do end up buying the physical book as well. Um, there's a lot of books that I have both physical and audio. And actually for my soul series, because it was so much in the books, like the entire series was going through those three books and um, so what I actually did, because I had already read them, I played the audiobook on 1.5 speed really fast, and then I read along on the pages so that I could go through quicker to get the information. I've never seen any, I haven't seen the Buzz Lightyear movie. Um, I'm not sure. I've actually never seen one of those um, Pixar movies. Are you also becoming more distant of people and choosing your friends lately? Um, I'm very lucky that I have a lot of conscious friends. Um, so I'm very lucky that I do have a lot of people like that. I live in LA, so there's a lot of spiritual people here. I know LA gets like a bad rap for being like evil and having like a bunch of like, you know, uh, you know, whatever, empty people. And sure, they're here, but you also meet what you attract. So I meet people all the time. like. The last restaurant that I worked at in Beverly Hills, um, three people that I worked with were like, hey, have you ever heard of Dol Dolores Cannon? I'm like, yeah, yes, I have. So I think you attract, you know, people. Now I know it's harder in some other places um, to find people uh, that are like you. So just wait for it. There is people and there will be. Is there such thing as a devil? Does Dolores talk about that? Yeah, she does. And actually, I can't think off the top of my head what she says because I have so much different sources of that information um, that there's not, I'm pretty sure that she says that there's not really a devil, that there is lower astral entities and, but that there's not really like a devil who consciously is like, he, 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 you know? Um, and then my beliefs on that, I've heard different things too um, about Lucifer um, that, I've heard a lot of different things, you know? So, I don't know. It's not something that I really put too much uh, effort into. I do find that time has been very warped lately for a long time. Are you going to do a moon series? Oh, cool, that's a good idea. Um, you guys wanna like 
get messed up on the fact that the moon is not a moon? Do lizard people feed off of our suffering? Yeah. Yeah. What do I do for work? Um, I said earlier, I don't work. Um, I've been living off of my savings for about a year and a half now. Um, I had saved a bunch of money because literally I was working since I was 15 and like was, I had so much like, I was so afraid of like, cause I was like really poor when I was a kid and I had so much like fear around that, that I was afraid to even take days off of work and I worked so much and I barely would spend my money and I never would take a vacation and I didn't take any days off and I just tried to save money and I lived in like a lack mentality and, uh, so I ended up saving a considerable amount of money. And then I thought to myself, what am I going to do? Buy a house? Eh, how about I like invest in myself? So I figured like I'd rather just see what happens and invest in myself and in my own time. And then some crazy way um, I ended up on TikTok. How much do I make from TikTok? Zero. I make zero. I mean, you guys are sending gifts, so I will get something from the gifts, but, and I know the gifts sometimes, I, I wish I knew how much you guys paid for them because literally they give us like pennies for them. Um, so yeah, pretty much zero. Um, and I've never cashed out on it because I think you have to hit a hundred dollars before you can cash out, which I don't even think I ever hit. <laughs> so like, that's literally it. Um, yeah. So the thing with the creator fund is that they are very, um, People say it affects your views. I don't really care about the views. For me, it's about the censorship. And the Creator Fund makes it even more censored. And my videos are already like, they already don't approve a bunch of my videos. I already have a lot of issues with getting my videos up. So, which I don't know why, because I don't really talk about anything crazy, you know? Um, so, what will you do when you run out of money? I don't know, ask the universe. The universe is gonna do that for me. Um, so that's what's been happening is that, you know, basically the universe does come through. I have had some like kind of weird miracle things happen where like a little bit of money comes in right at the time that I need it. Or like I do occasionally work at events um, for my friend. My friend's an event coordinator. So like occasionally I will work at like a bar mitzvah. Um, where like a 12 year old has a half a million dollar party in Beverly Hills. <laughs> and then like basically uh, you make a few hundred bucks for taking the gifts from people and writing who put what gift. So yeah, occasionally do I do uh, random stuff like that. What did I do before I quit my job? I worked in a restaurant. Oh, you guys are sweet. You also, if you guys do want to support, I mean, I have my Venmo in my thing. You could send me a little tip if you want. Um, but of course, uh, that's totally up to you. Ooh, see the tsunami dream. I had a tsunami dream when I was younger that scared me so bad because it felt so real. And I grew up in Jersey. And when I moved to LA and the first time, actually I was here on vacation. The first time I went to Malibu, I was like, <gasps> that's the place from the dream. So that really scared me. Um, a lot of people have the tsunami dreams. Sorry, there was like someone outside my door. Not for me. Question, I've seen most of your videos and wonder if you've had weird bruising after your alien encounter. You know what, I was so young when it happened, I wouldn't know. Um, I've never really had the weird bruising thing that other people have experienced even with like sleep and stuff like that um but I did one time have like a weird I will never know what it is I thought it was a spider bite but like the spider would have had to be like this big so I don't know one time on my thigh I had like these two little like perfect marks like something did that and but that was like maybe like like seven years ago that was way after my alien experience do I miss my family living so far away from them Mm, I'm a black sheep of the family, guys. Um, I mean, I love my family, but I don't visit that often. Um, let's see. Are you Jewish? No, I'm not. Um, I was raised Catholic, but I do not follow a religion.
you just had that, the fang type thing. That was weird. See, mine was like maybe like, like that far apart, but it was still weird. You slept in the same bed as your sister and she was dragged out of the bed. Oh my God. Where am I originally from? I'm originally from Jersey City, New Jersey. Um, so Jersey City, it's across the Hudson River from Manhattan. So every picture of the New York skyline is actually taken from where I grew up. And mm. it's really gentrified now because like a lot of people can't afford to live in New York. So they moved to Jersey City. Um, so like they really cleaned it up and like gentrified the buildings. They actually like turned the old hospital into a hey, Union City. Yeah, I actually grew up on uh, the border of Union City and uh, Jersey City, right by Secaucus Road. Um, oh yeah, cool, Long Island. Yeah, I mean, I spent a lot of time in Long Island too. Um, my ex-boyfriend used to live in Ronkonkoma. Oh nice, Westfield. Do I believe in reincarnation? Man, you should watch my stuff. Did you go to college? No, I didn't. I did not go to college. Are you vegan? Um, no, I am more so pescatarian. Um, I do eat salmon probably once or twice a month because I just feel nice and my brain feels sharp when I eat it. So um, that's what I do. Morristown, nice, cool. What happened to my Jersey accent? Um, I mean, people here really hear it. Um, and also when I get mad, it's full blown. I'm Tony Soprano when I'm mad, okay? So <laughs> don't piss me off. <laughs> Have you had more um, alien experiences after the time with your siblings in the backyard? Um, to my conscious awareness, no. When I asked the Akashic Records, they said yes. They said that it's happened my whole life. Uh, but I don't know. And I am, a, I am a good sleeper. I go to sleep and I sleep so deep. Like I wake up, I like barely, like I have to peel my eyes open. I sleep so hard. Now, if I like hear something that's like out of the norm, I'll pop out of like sleep right away. Like if someone were to like touch my door handle, I'll pop up. But like as aside from that, oh my God, I sleep like hard. I always like had trouble waking up in the morning. So I don't know, stuff could be happening in my sleep. I would have no idea. Um, I actually told was told by the Akashic Records that um, there's things that have been done to me uh, by aliens while I was asleep where they had like basically kind of like done things to like improve my immune system, which is legit because I mean, I really do have like kind of a crazy immune system. Although when I was younger, um, I didn't, but as an adult, I do. After I stopped eating meat, I pretty much never really got sick after that. Do I believe that crystals have consciousness? Oh yeah, for sure. People keep asking about the moon. Okay, so the moon is like a satellite. So they say that the moon is not a moon because all the other moons are not perfect circles because there's a bunch of stuff flying around space and it hits these moons. So when you look at all the other moons of all the other planets, their moons are all banged up and like missing stuff, got holes in it. Our moon is perfect. It just gets hit with stuff, but nothing can really affect it, huh? So, our moon, they say, was brought here. Um, and you know what, if you guys watch, because I did the live earlier with Astro 5D, one of the things that he talked about, we talked a little bit about NPCs, and he was like, sometimes you'll just have people come up to you um, and say stuff. So there was this blood moon in 2015. Um, there was a blood moon in 2015 that was crazy. Um, it was a crazy thing for me. Um, that was during my time where I was like learning a lot of stuff. So I did like, oh, thanks for someone just sent me a uh, Venmo. Very sweet of you. Thank you so much. Um, so basically, um, the moon is a luminary. Yeah, even though it might not be an actual moon, it is a luminary. Um, but basically, uh, this moon this blood moon that happened in 2015 it was an eclipse and a blood moon and it was red and it was crazy i do have cash app it's in the, my bio 
in the link in my bio. It's official JK Ultra, but go look to make sure the spelling is all right. Cause there's another guy named JK Ultra who's just named Jake, who had my username already. Um, yeah, and some random homeless guy came up to me. I went outside to go look at the moon and some random homeless guy came up to me and was like, you know, the moon's a satellite, don't you? And I was like, okay, sir, I'm, I'm gonna keep walking. Oh, five years later or so, Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. Thank you for the Venmo. I just saw it. Um, yeah, so when that guy told me the moon was a satellite, that crazy homeless man, I thought he was crazy. And now I'm the crazy homeless man, okay? <laughs> Do I believe in the firmament? No, I already talked about that. I don't, I don't. What type of new content do you have during the series break? Um, I told you I'm gonna be doing the Loch Ness Monster. Um, I'm gonna do something about language and how language is used to control us. Um, something about inner earth, uh, the dead internet theory, and also some stuff from the, the body keeps the score. So I think it's a satellite. Yeah, I think the moon is a satellite. Um, I do. Oh yeah, it for sure affects the tides and the emotions. That's for real. The stuff that we experience from the moon is real. I mean, our periods are linked up with the moon. Our actual physical bodies, our menstruation cycle works to the moon. So when people say the moon is fake, a lot of times people like discredit everything about it and like, no, just because the moon is not a moon doesn't mean that the moon's not doing all the shit that we know it's doing. Okay, I will do the language one soon because I really like that one. That one is complex. Uh, it's going to take a bit of, um, what do I think is at the South Pole? I mean, Antarctica uh, has a lot of crazy shit going on down there. Do you believe that we incarnate on other planets or to other levels or one um, multi-level terrarium? I don't believe in the terrarium thing. But um, yeah, I do believe that there's other planets. Um, but I believe that we're in a hologram. So maybe the other planets are holograms too. Maybe only holograms exist. I don't know. As far as that goes. Do it on gravity. I don't know enough about gravity. How is my own soul journey going? You know what? You know what, Carly? It's going pretty darn well. Going pretty well. <laughs> Okay, so the hologram thing, I did explain it a little bit earlier. Um, I'll explain it again. So basically, the universe is a, a hologram. Hologram is a, oh, thanks guys. You're sending me Venmos, you're so sweet. Um, so the hologram uh, basically is an image of light. So an, a reflecting image of light. However, with a hologram, a tiny piece holds the whole. So if you took a little molecule out of a hologram, it's going to show the entire picture in that little piece that is the whole. So that pattern is what's happening everywhere in creation. That pattern is happening in our body, outside of our body, with the planet, in the galaxy, in the universe. So it's a hologram. This is the reason why they say you create your own reality. If this place was actually a firmament, you think you could create your own reality inside a terrarium? No. Um, no, you create your own reality because it's a hologram. And we're always reprinting the hologram. This is why those things like 55515 work or the solfeggio frequencies, because they affect the hologram. Um, I do talk about it a lot more in the Earthshift series. You guys should watch, there's a couple videos. Um, Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, the earth shift is, I love it, honestly. Um, we can still create even create even though this is a prison, can we still create even though this is a prison planet? Okay, so the prison planet thing is complicated. It's not exactly, in my opinion, this is my opinion based on everything that I have um, come across. Uh, the prison planet thing is complicated because in a way it's true and in a way it's not true, which, kind of is everything. So the way that it's a prison planet, isn't this whole thing like, oh, you go into the light and pop right out of another baby. That's ridiculous. Every single person that has ever been under hypnosis and goes to their higher self and to like LBL or QHHT 
every single one of them say like they select their life. You don't just pop right out of a baby because you need to um, talk about, you know, you need to figure out your lessons in life. You need to assess how well you did in your next life. You need to make contracts with other people. You can't do that in one second. Now, the way that it sort of is a prison planet um, is through karma. So basically, there are negative entities that control our matrix. So those entities that are controlling our matrix actually create systems to create negative karma. So when you're, you could become stuck on the karma wheel because you're not learning your lessons. So it's not like you pop right out of another baby, but you're gonna experience traumatic things and then if you don't heal from them, you have to come back and try again. So there is some type of prison planet thing. It's not really a prison because you don't have to come back, but then your soul doesn't advance and your soul basically stays at the same part, which some souls are okay with. But if we are ascending beings, such as we are, we do want to grow, we do want to ascend. So you will come back and try it over again. And this is the reason why, you know, we have basically this thing that feels like a prison planet because people are in a matrix that makes it extremely difficult to heal from trauma. How do we know if we found out our life lessons um, because we have not experienced much adverse adversity? Um, everything is uh, a lesson. So every single thing that happens to you, you know, look for what you're meant to learn out of it. And that's everything you can do. You know, N want some of my adversity. <laughs> and that's the thing is that, you know, everyone has a different path. So trauma isn't the only way, you know? And also some people have stuff that happens later in life too. So some people have a good childhood and then have to deal with that adversity, you know, later in their life for some reason. Not saying that that's what will happen to you, but it's like, we can't just like discredit that just because someone didn't have, you know, childhood trauma that they don't have any lessons or that they have easy lessons. Oh, thanks guys. I look similar, but you don't know where I've seen me before. Hmm. I don't know. I get that all the time. I'm telling you like a hundred times in my life, people have been like Natalia. Natalia. And I'm like, no, no, that's not me. Everyone, like so many people think I look like their friend Natalia. And it's ridiculous how many times this happens to me. Have I ever been under hypnosis? Yes, I have. Um, I have, I did videos about it. I did two videos about it on my YouTube. One is about the Akashic Records and hypnosis. The other one is about my past lives. Yeah, a lot of people are saying, I have a doppelganger. I have so many doppelgangers. Like, I've never seen one in real life. But online, I have seen so many pictures of people where I'm like, I never did that. Wait, <laughs> like, I have actually a folder. Actually, no, I don't because I cleared off my phone because I had to, I, I just take up too much memory on my phone doing the videos. But I have come across, I probably have them still saved on my computer. So many people that look exactly like me online and it is creepy. Someone tagged me in someone's stuff on TikTok who looked just like me. The thing is that people look like me, but not from the side, you know, not from the side. <laughs> that you're not supposed to see your doppelganger in person. I've had people follow my doppelgangers. I had one person take a picture because literally they followed this girl, they thought it was funny to scare me, and then it wasn't me. So they sent me a picture of her. Similar mannerisms too. Yeah, it's nuts. And I never met people that look exactly like me in real life, but I see them all the time online. Can you talk about what happens when the soul finishes their journey? Um, so we're gonna keep evolving up and up and up and above those higher levels, you know, we don't know what's even gonna happen above 5D. We don't even know that. But you know, what they say at the end of all of it, when you do all the levels, you return back to source and you join back with source. And then eventually all of the souls 
will ascend and they'll join back with Source too. And then all of us will be together with Source and the universe will be complete and something else will start that we don't comprehend. What do I think about mantis aliens? Um, there's like some of my favorites. I love mantis aliens. Um, I have always been very connected to mantises. They have come, uh, you know, into my life. I, what's sad is since I moved to California, I have not seen a praying mantis um, in person. But in Jersey City, where it is literally like a straight up grungy, dirty, nasty city, um, I saw praying mantises all the time. I saw them being born. They literally would like come outside my window, put their like little Utheka sack and then be born right there. I had a little baby one being born on my nail. Um, I had them as pets when I was younger. I actually had two praying mantises as pets. I love them. And so they say that praying mantises are actually, they say that actually, you know, all of the animals are reflections of beings throughout our universe. So the ones that are here are almost like reflections of them. So there's kind of like a reflection of them here. So if you're connecting with a praying mantis, it's almost kind of like calling the mantis alien and being like, hey, hello, I'm here. You know, so it's not like the ones that are here are aliens. They're really just um, a connection to that. And they say the same thing with cats too. Um, so cats, uh, they say are connected to feline aliens and that, you know, being connected to cats is also having a connection to the feline aliens. But how does that work if new souls are created? I'm not sure how, what the, in relation to, but if new souls are created, new souls aren't really created. They break off from the soul. So you have like a source and they break off of that egg, become individual, live all of these experiences, learn all these lessons, ascend to a point where they can fully understand and then join back. <laughs> Do we ever truly die though? Um, die, death is a transition, but our time in this avatar ends. What do I think about the Nordic aliens Pleiadians? Okay, so there's a lot of debate about this, of whether the Nordic aliens are Pleiadians or whether they're different beings. Personally, I believe that they're different. Um, also, not all Pleiadians are good, you know? Um, so I've heard a lot of stuff, especially, you know, we talked about Ashiana Dean before. She really thinks there's a lot of bad Pleiadians out there. Um, but just like everything else, there's good and bad. So I do feel very connected to Pleiadians. I love them. I think they're great. I love the channeled stuff from Pleiadians because it really resonates with me, like Barbara Marciniak and Barbara Handclaw. But, um, you know, like everything, there's going to be good and bad. Pleiadians are sus. <laughs> some of them are. Uh, some of them are for sure. Um... Okay, so this is something that's in those Barbara Marciniak books. So part of the reason, the reason why you're saying like Pleiadians are sus, they kind of are because some of them worked with reptilians to originally enslave humanity. So this is the reason. So we have, okay, so we have our ancient Pleiadians who are part of our like founders of this planet. But just like us right now creating AI, we're thinking we're God creating AI, creating it to be our slaves, not realizing that that thing is going to grow one day into something that was created in our image, but has been enslaved all these years. So this is what happened with the Pleiadians. They took part in all of these alien races who created us. Um, partially, some of those races of aliens created us to be slaves to mine gold, uh, you know, and to be here to work for them on this planet. Then we keep evolving. Now, the, the Pleiadians in the future, they're doing their shadow work and they're like, oh, fuck. The reason we're dealing with this is because of what our ancestors did. Is this not the exact reflection of what's happening on earth right now? We have so many, just with humans, 
within cultures. We have people realizing that their ancestors harmed other people and that those things need to be healed on both sides. The ancestors of the people who did it and the ancestors of the people who it was done to. So the same thing is repeating on a cosmic level where some of these aliens from the future are like, oh man, our ancestors really screwed up those humans by creating them that way. And now they're still enslaved thousands of years later. Now we, so some of the Pleiadians are good because they're coming from the future because they're just trying to clear their karma so they can move on. So it's not like it's completely service to us. It's a service to themselves. Gold opens portals. I believe it could. Are you spiritual? No, not really. No, just joking. What are you talking about? Um, Ellie, any, any knowledge on the grays? Okay, so I know a lot of people don't like the grays. But let me tell you, I like the grays. Um, of course, like everything else, there's good and bad. However, the grays are a time traveling species. So they're living in simultaneous time all the time. So a lot of times what they're doing from our perspective looks bad. Um, so they look like, you know, some of the stuff that they're doing, like abducting people, seems, oops, really fucked up because they're abducting us. Uh, but when you look at the grand scale, like if I didn't have that alien encounter that scared the shit out of me when I was a kid, I wouldn't be here right now talking about this. So a lot of times those negative experiences will have a positive outcome. So that's the perspective of the grays. The grays are like, well, who cares if it scares you now, if it's going to help you later. So they just have a different perspective because the way that they view things. Um, and also the grays have so much separated from their organic self that they have disconnected from their souls and they have become a hive mind because they actually lost their souls and became a hive again. So they're not an I am consciousness. They're a collective. And they're a collective that just operates on one plan. So your left eye is telling. What is it telling you, buddy? <laughs> um, what's the correct calendar? Uh, I mean, is there a correct calendar? Time's not even real, you know? Um, you should do a live every day. I'll do lives more often. I will. I really enjoy them. They're so much fun. How do I feel about light language? Like the people doing those videos? It doesn't really, it doesn't resonate with me. I don't know. Um, I'm not saying those people are lying or not legit or valid. Um, it just doesn't, I, it doesn't, I don't know. It's a little off for me. I don't like to watch it. What did you study? You're looking at it, buddy. Go check my Instagram and my TikTok and my YouTube. That's what I study. Um, oh, thanks, you guys. What do I feel is beyond the ice wall? Guys, I don't believe in the ice wall. Um, did you go to school? No, not college. I didn't. I mean, I went to film school, but it was more of a trade school because that's what I actually like do and plan to do in my life uh, and still plan to do. Uh, I've always written TV and film. That's what I've always been into. That's why I live in LA. Um, I've worked in production and stuff like that. Um, that's why, you know, part of the reason why I've met a lot of celebrities. I know you guys have seen some pictures of me with like different people. That's why I've met so many people um, just living here, working here, people that I know. Um, but uh, yeah, ooh. Yeah, New Mexico has huge film stuff going on. That's good to know because I've been very called to New Mexico. Do I know my human design? I am a manifesting generator. Um, my thoughts on Atlantis. I am a big uh, fan of Atlantis. I'm not like super, super knowledgeable about it. Dolores has a ton of information about it. Um, you know, because I'm not like someone who like channels in that way. So I don't really have any like information on that except for the stuff that I've come across. But I do believe that part of the reason why um, some people are, you know, feeling with a lot of the things that are happening in like science and the medical and stuff, I do think right now we're reflecting some of the stuff that happened um, in Atlantis. 
I talked about that Ashayana Dean in the beginning of this. Um, like I said, some of her information resonates, but a lot of it doesn't connect for me. Do I connect to the Akashic Records by myself? Yes, I do. Um, so you can read the book, How to Read the Akashic Records or How to Access the Akashic Records by Linda Howe. Um, I do believe in inner earth. I do um, very much believe in inner earth. The Agartha Network, um, Telos in Mount Shasta, I super believe in that. What's a good hypnotist for past lives in Los Angeles? I saw um, a guy named Jerome DeWitt. How many push-ups can you do? Zero. Which Dolores book should you start with? Um, I believe if you are more interested in like answers about like souls, life, death, Jesus, the devil, fairies, that, then read um, Dolores Cannon's Between Death and Life. If you're more interested in aliens and the beginning of this planet and how it was seeded, um, then listen to um, or read uh, Keepers of the Garden. What happens when Kelly goes underwater? Mm, I mean, shit's gonna be going down already by that point. How do you research most of your information? I mean, I give it in almost all the videos. Almost every video, I tell you exactly where the information is from. Um, have I read Behold a Pale Horse? Uh, not front to back. Um, oh, cool, man, your, your screen name though. Guccifer007, oh, Guccifer. I love that, that's hilarious. Guccifer, oh my God, that cracks me up. I don't know if you guys know about Guccifer, but he's the guy who was a, um, he was a, uh, like a cab driver in like, I forget, maybe Serbia or something, or I can't think of what country he was in, but basically he just guessed all the president's passwords and Colin Powell and all these people, he just guessed everyone's password. And when they saw the computer he was hacking on, he literally had the, the letters written on in nail polish. This guy's a legend. And then he released the photos um, of George Bush painting himself, which were like these weird naked paintings in the shower of himself. Um, so yeah. Uh, Guccifer, that whole story uh, cracks me up. I'm like, yeah, exactly, supposedly a hacker. Was he a hacker or just someone who was like, hmm, what's the name of their dog? Sure, I'll try that as the password and then gets into the president's password. <laughs> yeah, that happened a long time ago. And then also Guccifer used that information to go onto Facebook and he went on Colin Powell's Facebook and was like, Illuminati and posted all this shit on his from his Facebook page. It's actually a hilarious, um, a, a hilarious thing to look into. Are you liberal? Um, no, I don't affiliate with either side. I don't resonate with being liberal or conservative. I don't really believe in divisive politics. Do I think sinkholes are a part of inner earth? Um, I don't know about a part of, but I think that, you know, sometimes they do sink in because there is a bunch of hollow shit sometimes under there, but it's not completely hollow. There's pockets of hollow. So like the inner earth, it's not like it's just a big old empty, you know, ball inside. There's pockets. They say it's a honeycomb structure. Yeah, both sides are too extreme. Exactly. Like, no, both sides are extreme. There is literally extremists on both sides and people need to realize there is no lesser of two evils. Both sides of the political spectrum are extreme. And if you only side on one side, guys, we're not gonna get there. We need to unite. No, I haven't really continued the John Bonet series just because it's, so controversial like literally they almost took down my account and you know when I meditated on it uh basically the information that I was told was there's more important things for me to share like the 5d like consciousness like earth shift like the soul stuff and that that's not really important yet um I do want to and of course it gets crazy views and all that but it's like you know I don't like to just do stuff to be like for the views, you know? 
I mean, you guys know that I don't really like post those like sensationalized videos of like, ooh, something like a UFO, what is it? You know, just because I want to really help people understand these concepts, you know? Tips on how to fall asleep, how to not fall asleep during meditation. Well, it's good that you're getting so relaxed that you fall asleep, so there's nothing wrong with that. Um, just set the intention before of what you want to accomplish. So like say, you know, it's okay if you fall asleep. Um, I know you want to like do things when you're meditating, but it's okay if you fall asleep. Um, you know, just maybe set your intention beforehand of what you wanted to accomplish and maybe you'll have a dream about that. Oh, I know the, the children's book during the soul series. Oh my God, that book is so sweet. Like literally I had to like, like prevent myself from crying during that video while I was recording it. It was so beautiful. What's a good amount of minutes when you're meditating? Um, whatever works for you. But honestly, doing a three minute meditation is better than doing no meditation. So don't worry. Um, someone asking, is earth flat or round? It is a hologram. <laughs> what do the souls do when we were cavemen? Okay, so this is what's interesting. So in that chapter about NPCs in, well, not NPCs, backdrop people in Dolores Cannon's book, it's actually the way that she learned about it was through a caveman time. The person regressed to a caveman time and they were one of the only people who like had a soul at that time. And it actually then the person realized that they were not even like an earth soul. They were actually a higher dimensional being that went into a caveman and basically had a like mission to like save this baby. Um, and because the baby was important because the baby was going to be conscious. And so that's why I think a lot of times when people do past life regressions, um, they don't regress to caveman time because maybe they were not at the level of consciousness to have an I am uh, thing, an I am consciousness. Um, so QHHT cannot be done remotely. Anyone who's doing it remotely is not really doing the original method because Dolores was very adamant that it should never be done remotely because she's like, if you do it on Skype and the connection dies or the power goes out, you're basically leaving someone in a hypnotic state unattended. So there is people, there is a woman who used to be one of Dolores's protégés who then ended up creating uh, like a knockoff method but it's probably just as like legit, but she does it online. So it's called like QBT or something like that. I don't know. But um, yeah, so there's another method that people do online. What's her name? I don't remember, but um, if you look up like QHHT hypnosis, um, you'll probably see other stuff pop up about it. You haven't, did you not get your recording yet for your QHHT? Um, or you just haven't listened to it yet? Oh, BQH. You're right. That's, I think, what it's called. Yeah, Beyond Quantum Healing. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, yeah, so that's like another style. Nice. Yeah, I do want to do uh, my Patreon. I want to start it. Um, so, these glasses, the aura glasses. You guys, if you're interested in those aura glasses, go check out Museum of Tarot. He has spent, <laughs> he just did two videos about it. He spent like, he said tens of thousands of dollars researching it, creating them, figuring them out, making his own, and now he sells them. So um, he's, I really like his stuff. I don't know him personally, um, but I do really like his stuff. Austin, Texas. I want to go to Austin, Texas so bad. I kind of feel like for a while, like I want to move there, but I have a weird situation that I can't really talk about on here that kind of prevents me from moving there. What's his username? Museum of Tarot.
Austin is great. You moved there from New York. Yeah, I really want to go. I have actually never even um, visited. Can you do past life at home? Yes, you can do yourself a past life regression. Look on YouTube, type in Brian Weiss, Dr. Brian Weiss, past life regression, um, and then put no ads. But unfortunately, people told me that there is ads on all of them, so it's really disruptive when you're doing that meditation and an ad pops up. What exactly is quantum jumping? Um, the concept is that you switch timelines. The reality is that we're always on the chance to switch a timeline with every decision. So a lot of people do the methods of quantum jumping. Um, I think that's more so just like consciously meditating uh, because we're always, if there's only the now, the now reprints, the now reprints, the now reprints. So we always have the option to be on different timelines. Um, yeah, uh, Museum of Tarot warned about the gateway experience and consistencies. Um, yeah, he has a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, I really like the information he has. Honestly, I want to go to Tennessee and like get in that museum he's got there. I want to check out those books. I'm like, whenever he has a video, I'm like trying to like read the books be and behind him because he's got really interesting books. Um, Aw, you guys, that's so sweet. The soul series was the beginning of your spiritual awakening. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, he's great, Museum of Tarot. Actually, um, he kind of like presents a lot of information that rocks some people. Like he really like went hard on the on the Law of One, the book, the raw material. He went hard on that. And see, like this is what I was saying about Ashayana Dean before. When the channeling sounds like a computer to me, uh, I have a little bit of like apprehension just because most of the channeling that I've resonated with doesn't sound like a computer. So like the raw material, which um, I haven't read front to back. Uh, and I, like I said, I get information from everywhere. I follow all different types of people, whether I agree with them or not. Um, and I read all types of things, whether I agree with it or not. So. I like to get information from everywhere. It's not like, oh, because someone said that this was compromised, now I have to like not even read it. And it's like, no, you read it and you have discernment. Oh, thanks guys. But it's because it's from a higher consciousness. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, but when I hear channeled information that I don't feel good, I just don't take it in 100%. I have a much more discerning eye about what I'm reading. You know, it doesn't mean that I think that the information is not, there's not true information in there. Uh, I just, if my heart doesn't feel like it's connecting, uh, then I definitely like, you know, go with the fine tooth comb. Oh, I'm so sorry um, about your boyfriend. Um, with those situations, I don't know if you saw the video that I did about that, about people, you know, unaliving themselves. Um, I'm so sorry that happened. Um, the person is going to be around you. But the thing is, is sometimes when people do take their own lives, um, they need time. Their soul needs a little bit of time to cross over. So like a lot of times people who die in other ways, they're able to kind of be here quicker. It just takes a little bit more time because that person is being healed on the other side, but they're always met with compassion. There's so much compassion and understanding on the other side. So um, if you don't feel his energy immediately, um, it's because there's healing that's happening. But I'm so sorry for that. That's really, I just like, that's one of those things that it just really, it hurts me so much when people, you know, do that because, you know, no one really wants to do that. It's obviously they just are in a state that, you know, they are not able to, you know, make that rational decision in that moment, you know? Yeah, Journey of Souls touches on it. Yeah. And the information that they give is so beautiful because there's a lot of harmful information around that. But those people are okay. You know, 
they're always met back with love. Oh, and that's the thing is if you don't feel his energy right now, it's okay. It's because like if you watch, um, I don't know if you saw my video in the soul series about it. If not after this, go and watch it's, I don't know, maybe part like eight or so of the soul series. They talk about how like one of the people, um, that had done that to themselves when they were back on the other side, first they have to go through like a shower of healing. But sometimes they're not ready to even do the healing yet. They just go to a resting place. And the resting place is just a place for them to not remember their life, not remember anything. Sometimes they go to like their childhood bedroom or just a safe place that they felt in this life. And they'll just kind of stay in that safe place until their guide feels that they're ready to do the healing. Then they cleanse them. They meet, make them back to their full, amazing, beautiful selves that they've always been, their true soul self. And then after that healing, then they start to kind of go over and reflect with that person and on that life. So you will feel his energy again, but it might just take a little longer. Oh, and that's the thing too, you know, you don't rush your grieving process. Um, but also as more time goes on, and this is, I know so recent, but you just remember that, you know, you're not gonna grieve forever because that's not what anyone wants when they go to the other side. They don't want you grieving for them. You know, they want you to be happy and to live an amazing life and to continue exactly what, you know, they want your best life. They want you to reach your full potential and live in your purpose. So just, you know, give it a little bit of time. It takes definitely some time for their soul to kind of understand what has happened. And sometimes they don't immediately jump into that like other souls do. Oh, see, and someone said they will pop up and contact you via the subconscious and there will be messages. And that's true. You are going to get, because you're connected and your souls are always connected and you will be together again. You know, we all meet with our loved ones again. Oh. Yeah. Journey of Souls and Destiny of Souls are must reads. Oh. And it's hard, you know, you say you wish you, you knew that sooner um, about your mom's passing. Um, it takes time, you know? How, you know, that's your, that's your mom. You know, you can't, you learn the information at the right time. You know, we always learn information at the time that's right for us. So, you know, things could have been different if we learned things sooner, but at the same time, maybe we had to learn from those experiences. Oh, you got into a car accident today and now you don't want to ever get in a car again. It's okay. Just take some time. So the biggest thing, especially with a car accident, is that your uh, nervous system has gone up here. Your nervous system right now is like, oh my God, if a pen falls, you're going to freak out because your nervous system is like, ah, it's in protection mode. It's in survival mode. You're in fight or flight right now. So it's okay. You just got to... First of all, obviously when we have car accidents, we get angry at ourselves or other people or we get upset about the car or the damage or the other stuff that happens, insurance and all the bullshit, the stuff that we have to deal with. But you just know that, you know, when that happens, it's because your nervous system is in fight or flight. So what you need to do is maybe look up like a, um, a like, a nervous system reset video and just meditate and try to do things to get your nervous system kind of back to its normal state because the thing is is when we're in accidents or when we're in those type of things that are life-threatening this is what anxiety is is you stay in that heightened state so people who have anxiety everyone has anxiety but people who have debilitating anxiety it means that their nervous system went up here and they can't get it back down so just know it takes time, obviously, and I'm sorry for that. You're probably shooken up. It's really scary, but thank God you're here. Thank God you're, you know, not in the hospital or anything right now. And literally, like, you know, it'll take some time. 
Yeah, and you have bad anxiety already. So you know what? Your nervous system probably already was in fight or flight. So definitely try to work on like seeing like nervous system reset meditation or like stuff like that, that you kind of like, especially ones that you kind of work through the body and they have you kind of like, you know, relax your, your, your brow, relax your eye, relax your mouth, relax your thing. And they kind of move down your body, those type of meditations. Those are excellent for resetting your nervous system. Ah, can a person regress to just baby childhood in this life? Yes, you can actually. Um, Dolores did that several times for people. Um, uh, also, Michael Newton did that in his book as well. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult, not for the person receiving it, but just because not all hypnotists are experienced in that type of way. But it's really just the changing of the wording of the hypnotism. You can regress to your younger self. And when you do the Brian Weiss, if you go and do that Brian Weiss past life regression, Brian Weiss's method, which I'm not as much of a fan as his stuff, as obviously you guys can tell that I like Michael Newton and Dolores Cannon a lot more. I like Brian Weiss too, but I just don't resonate with him as much because he's kind of like the celebrity of them, you know? He was on Oprah and all that. So I kind of like the underdogs more, even though Dolores is no underdog anymore. Everyone, you know, really loves her now, long after she's gone. Um, same thing with Dr. Newton. Everyone loves him now that he's gone. But, you know, Brian Weiss, he was on Oprah and did all the stuff. So I just didn't connect with him as much. But um, the way he does his hypnosis is to bring you back so instead of the other methods that like they use, he goes backward. So he actually regresses you back to the womb and then beyond that. So he uses a different method. Have you learned any more about the 369 numbers on earth? Um, I haven't learned anything new about them recently. It, I haven't really looked into it recently, but I do believe that they are the divine manifestation uh, numbers. And I, do, I know schizophrenia is absolutely real, but do you think there is a chance that some can see more? I do. Um, some people, uh, because that's the thing that sometimes is troubling with schizophrenia. And I don't like to like really talk about those medical things that much because I don't want to like stray anyone away from what's going to help them. But sometimes, with schizophrenia, um, sometimes they have real information that like their delusions are like valid information that they wouldn't know about people. So it is concerning um, whether there's more to that. However, you know, my best friend, actually surprisingly two of my best friends growing up both had schizophrenic parents. Um, and my one friend who I was even closer to and her mom, you know, I really saw the effects of the schizophrenia. So it's hard to really say fully, you know, when you really see it happening to someone. Um, yeah, it oftentimes is misdiagnosed, um, but it is also hard to kind of make general statements because when you actually see people experiencing it, it's very scary for them, for you, painful for people, you know? So uh, yeah, um, a lot of people say it's a spiritual affliction. I, I believe that too. Um, What do I think of Oprah, by the way? I can't say that. <laughs> the MJ-12 uh, disclosure documents, yeah. Those are really interesting. <laughs> I find it suspicious that anyone who can astral travel never has valid proof. What type valid proof do you want like the thing the proof people get me is like okay so something that's happening outside of physical reality can be proven in physical reality that doesn't make sense what you should look into is the remote viewing because there is actually a lot of valid proof about remote viewing um so yeah, exactly. How can you prove astral projection? But look into the remote viewing. They can prove that. Thanks, guys. I don't know. 
oh, you know, the thing with the people who are suffering from DID, um, like I said, I don't like to talk about like medical type stuff because, you know, I wouldn't want to lead anyone towards a path that is not serving them, you know? So I do think that, you know, people do need to be a little bit more open-minded that maybe more could be happening with that person and maybe that person needs other help um, like on a spiritual level. Yeah, Stephen A. Schwartz for remote viewing, yeah. Do you think that there's one person who truly understands what's going on? I mean, everyone has a piece of the puzzle. I have not heard of that um, account. I will check it out. Why do you think a lot more of the rural areas um, and countries have more spiritual activity? Okay, so I have a video that I did that I haven't posted. Um, I'm gonna put it on my uh, YouTube actually. I went to the Salton Sea. Um, I went to the Salton Sea in uh, the middle of the desert of California. And you know, you see mirages. When you're driving in the desert, like I grew up not in this type of terrain. So I, I thought mirages were fake. But when you're driving in the desert, you literally look like there's a lake in front of you in the middle of the desert and you literally see a reflection of stuff on the ground and it looks like a lake. And as you get closer, the lake disappears. And so I was recording a video while I was driving in the desert, which I'll put on my YouTube eventually. And it made me think of what you're asking of like, huh, these mirages and like these things, a lot of times it's in the desert that people see aliens or that people in the middle of nowhere see a Bigfoot or Loch Ness Monster or like different things. So I'm like, why is this happening in the middle of nowhere? Then I'm like, wow. So is it happening? Because, okay, when we give something our attention, when we observe it, it manifests and shapes around us. However, out in those areas, no one is observing. So does that mean because all the dimensions are here, everything is right here in this one place. So like every dimension, all the higher dimensions, all the lower dimensions, we're all existing in the same space. So maybe if we're not observing those areas where no one is observing, those like molecules, those atoms or whatever are being used by other beings in other dimensions. And that's why more stuff is happening out there. I don't know. You saw a mirage in your town? That's crazy. I don't understand why it happens. Oh, wow. That's a cute uh, gift. Thanks, guys. Uh, no, I don't know if I'll ever tell the possession story. I've thought of it. But at the same time, uh, like I said, I don't really know if he's okay um, because there was so much betrayal and so many other things that happened alongside that story. And trust me, it is the craziest fucking story ever. Like it's worse than a horror movie. Um, but I don't know if he's okay because we did not talk after that um, because also the cheating, the betrayal, the everything, it was so bad on the spiritual level and on the physical, the human, the 3D, the everything. So it was such a bad breakup that I have not spoken to that person. So, um, but then again, I don't really know how he's doing. So I wouldn't want to like put up a video and like get views and stuff on it when this person could potentially be suffering. Yeah, people have contacted Dolores through hypnosis. I've heard of it. Um, I have read some of them. To be honest, I don't, you know, trust just anyone, um, you know, who says that stuff because, I mean, a lot of people do also, like not every single person in the spiritual community or the conspiracy community or everything is of sound mind. You know, not everyone is like fully logical or grounded or anything you know so but i have seen some things and also dolores cannon's daughter says that dolores does come through in other people's sessions i mean i wish she would contact me i mean dolores i'm i'm doing the leg work here come talk to me yeah
you see mirages in Arizona. It's so weird. Yeah, that's where I was driving. I was driving from California to Arizona and I was like, like, I didn't even think they were real. Like every, for some reason, when I think of a mirage, I only think about the Beavis and Butthead movie. And like, so it's crazy that, you know, Okay, so speaking of contacting Dolores, okay, so Napoleon Hill, who I talked about earlier, um, he has a meditation method. Now, this is not really channeling, it's more of like a exercise, but it's called the boardroom. So basically you visualize yourself in a boardroom. The boardroom could look however you want and you're at the head of the table. Now, you get to pick four people dead or alive, whoever you want to be on your board. So you're here at the front, you know, got Dolores over here, got Michael Newton over here. Um, I'll probably take Vishen Lakiani over here. And then I don't know, I got a toss up on the other. So then you visualize this and these people, and then you visualize yourself trying to solve a problem in this room and you're gonna kind of get perspective from these people. Is this actually coming from their soul? Um, maybe not, you know, I don't know. However, if you know the person's work, you do kind of know how they're gonna respond. So um, you'll have these different people in your boardroom and then you can do, Leonardo DiCaprio is at yours. <laughs> Jeffrey Allen, those are good, yeah, I love Jeffrey Allen. Um, so, that's the thing. Uh, you can always use that as a method for solving any type of problem in your life. Where besides books do you get information? Um, so I do really like Mind Valley. Um, I'm not a member anymore, but I did do most of their quests when I was. Um, I like Mind Valley. I like Gaia TV. I mean, majority is from books. I also look online. Um, plenty of different places online. There's so many things. Like, you know, I don't have a specific website that I use. Oh yeah, you love Mind Valley. Mind Valley is the greatest. I'm actually gonna reach out to them to sponsor me, um, just because like I, I gotta make money, guys. So I do want to do some sponsored content, but at the same time, I want to do sponsored content that I genuinely a hundred percent believe and stand behind, not just random stuff. Mind Valley is kind of like masterclass, but for like mental mastery. So it's really great. Like oh my gosh, oops. I didn't do the Jeffrey Allen one and I kind of regret it that I didn't do it in that time. Uh, oh, thanks. Thanks, guys. Is it expensive? Um, yes, kind of, depending on how you feel, but it is worth it. Um, so it's 500 for the year um, and you get to get access to everything. So if you only end up doing one thing, then it's not maybe worth it to you. However, I ended up doing 17 classes and those classes changed my life. That's how I had the confidence to quit my job. Um, that's how I learned how to meditate better, um, to really achieve things in my meditation through the Silva method. Um, I also took the Lisa Nichols course, who I love Lisa Nichols. She's incredible. I have a plant named after her, but my plant's not doing too well, so I'm not gonna show you. Um, Ken Honda has a class on there. Um, and Ken Honda is great. He has a class called Happy Money and he calls himself uh, the, the Happy Panda. And he's like a Japanese millionaire who has a completely different philosophy on money and it's beautiful. He also has a book called Happy Money. So if you want to um, check out his stuff, that book is highly recommended. Um, what would I say is my favorite on Mind Valley? Yeah, those are all from Mind Valley. My favorite, favorite, favorite of Mind Valley is. Silva Ultramind. It changed my life, changed my meditation. It's the only way I meditate now. Any advice before you get a regressive hypnosis session? Um, I did on my video on YouTube called My Past Lives. In the beginning of the video, I give some suggestions on what questions you should ask or think about asking. Um, my biggest thing is like, don't just rush and have the session like right away. You know, for me, my person that I saw was like booked out for like three months. So it actually was a good thing for me because then it gave me enough time to think about my questions because sometimes, you know, your first like couple days of thinking what you should ask, it's hard to think of 
and you'll come up with stuff, but if you give it a little bit of time, you'll really come up with some more stuff. So give yourself enough time to come up with the questions. Mind Valley is pushing ayahuasca treats, retreats. I've never heard of that. Um, I know that Vishen Lakiani has done ayahuasca, but I don't think that they host any retreats. I'm sharp with my memory. Thank you. How can we prove this? Um, with practical things like meditation. Um, yeah, meditation works. Uh, also, um, let me think of like, there's definitely some methods. So I also took a course on Mind Valley called um, Super Brain and Super Reading. And those are with um, Jim Quick. He's really great too. Um, not on the spiritual side, more on like the brain side of things. Um, and he has a lot of methods for remembering stuff. So it's hard if you would talk about general memory, um, but uh, he talks about also kind of attaching something to it. So like say, and you'll probably notice that I do this in like some of my videos, um, like say when we're talking about the manifesting, I'll say like, okay, so when you manifest, you need to do your thoughts, words, emotions, and actions. So you see, I've created this like, Motion. So I touch here, thoughts, words, emotions, actions. And then that's the way. So like sometimes if there's something you have to remember, you can associate it with something like touching yourself and, or like an object because sometimes it makes it a little easier. So that's if you're trying to remember something specific. Yeah, Jim Quick is amazing. I really enjoy his stuff. The super reading, I enjoyed so much because I'm actually a slow reader. You guys might not believe that, but I'm a slow reader or I was a slow reader. Um, oh, thanks. Let's see. Plant medicine can be more beneficial than big pharma. That's true. What's wrong with ayahuasca? I want to try it. Um, I am not any type of... Um, I'm, that's, I'm not the person to ask about the ayahuasca stuff. Um, I'm still a slow reader, but my collection is growing. Exactly. Just trek on through and find stuff that's interesting to you. Um, as far as the ayahuasca, I don't like throwing up, peeing myself, pooping myself. I know. I, I know Alex called me after her experience. So I heard the, the whole thing. Um, when she did the other, um, the DMT, she stayed at my house afterwards. Um, so uh, I do know Alex's experience. Honestly, it sounded horrible, guys. That fucking experience sounded like my worst nightmare. A hell loop of throwing up? Sounds horrible. It's not for me. Um, I think it's for other people. They um, enjoy it. I did drugs when I was younger, guys. Like, I just, I did drugs at a very young age. And when you do those when you're young and you stop doing it, you don't really want to feel sick from a substance. You don't want to throw up from something or pee yourself or anything like that. Because you already kind of have, like, your body already kind of has, like, a negative association with, like, throwing up from ingesting something or something like that, you know? So, um, it's not the type. And also I personally don't feel that I need that to experience, you know, like some people want to do a little bit like the fast track, you know, they want to do the easy pass or like the quick lane. I'm like, dude, I've been reading these books for 10 years and doing all this stuff and these meditations and all this stuff. And like, I'm okay. I don't need to uh, be on the floor crying, peeing, pooping, throwing up. You know, I just, I don't know. It's a bit much. Yeah, there's a lot of other things. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, I've heard, I mean... I have so many friends that do ayahuasca um, and DMT and stuff. Uh, and it kind of goes each way, each way because some people go through kind of like a, a beautiful loop. Although I feel the people that kind of go through that like beautiful loop, um, 
have done certain other things first, you know, like, um, but the hell loop sounds horrible. Yeah. What meditation do you recommend? Um, I mean, the method I like is the Silva method. Um, if you can find any of that online, uh, I would highly, highly suggest doing the Silva method. I also love the heart coherence technique. It's not exactly a full meditation, but it's a good thing for your body. Also too, um, I think it's you, right? Spooky ho. <laughs> Sorry, your, your, your name. Uh, who you had the accident earlier today. Do the heart coherence technique by the Heart Math Institute. Just because, you know, that also helps reset your nervous system. Um, do I have it on YouTube, the Silva Method? So the Silva Method is probably on YouTube. If you can find it, I highly suggest doing it. Um, my friend said that there's like someone who mixes the Silva Method with Joe Dispenza's work. Um, I haven't found that video, but that's incredible. I love that. Um, love both of them. Uh, so if you can find Silva Method online, I highly suggest doing that. Yeah, it's on YouTube. I love it. I learned originally from the book, but I loved the book so much that that's why I signed up for Mind Valley. Do I like the gateway technique? Um, I'm interested in learning um, about everything, and I have read the do some of the documents, but I've never done it because I'm a little... Um, <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with your name. I like your name. I just feel bad that like later on YouTube when I'm someone's listening to this, they're like, why'd she call that girl spooky ho? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, what is the Silva mind control book right now? You're currently reading it. Oh, I love it. The book is great. Um, the book is the way to go. Uh, have I ever been scared while going into a different dimension or stepping into another realm? Um, I haven't really like gone into other dimensions, you know, or that I know of. Um, like I said, I did the astral projection. That only happened to me two times. Um, and I was not scared because I was trying to do it. Although I did see a reptilian while I was there and I got scared for a minute, but then he seemed really nice and cool. So, um, <laughs> You know, I did get scared for a minute. Have I done the gateway methods? No, I've never tried them. I've never listened to the recordings. I just have a little bit of like, I don't know, if I fully trust the recording. Um, I've heard people had really good experiences with it though. Planet X is a wild topic. Yeah, I mean, it's not my specialty, but that's like what, Nibiru, right? Um, and allegedly it will come back. I feel like it will. The audio is on YouTube. It'll help with astral body stuff. Yeah, that's what I hear. Um, I haven't tried it yet. I thought reptilians were evil. Not all of them. There's so many kinds. Um, can you heal your skin through meditation? Yes, you can. That is actually um, what Vishen Lakiani, who teaches the Silva Method, that's part of his story of how he believed in the Silva method because he used it to heal his skin because he had really bad acne when he was younger and he actually used the method, visualized his skin healing and he did heal it. Now, Road to Roses, who's here, my friend on TikTok, she um, also said that you can listen to those healing frequencies, the solfeggio frequencies, like 258 Hertz and stuff and have the intention of healing your soul. I mean, not your soul, your skin. I mean, your soul too, but your skin. Um, listen to it and visualize it. So you could do something like the visualization of the skin and combining it with the frequencies and it will happen all over time. So wait, there are reptilians that are good. Yeah, there's definitely, this is like everything in the world. There's good and bad in everything. Um, there are some reptilians that are bad. Um, the ones that are like doing shit here. Um, but there's so many of them throughout the galaxy, so many other kinds of reptilians that aren't. And there's also some reptilians that have already evolved too out of that darkness stage. Um, so yeah, I don't like to say anything is all good or all bad, you know? Wow. So you listen to the solfeggio for your skin. Wow. 
So the thing with the heart issues, like I said, I don't like to talk too much about the medical stuff, but I do believe that the illnesses and the ailments we have sometimes are chosen karmically, but also sometimes we've created them through our thoughts, words, emotions, actions. So a lot of times, and I'm not saying this is the case for you, I'm just saying that this is what I've heard. Also, when I have put people under hypnosis, this is what came up for people who had heart issues. And I can't say this is for everyone. Um, they say that sometimes it comes from like this. Okay, so there's sometimes that the person is like having an issue with like love, like they feel afraid to love or they feel unworthy of love, or sometimes they feel like a really great burden, um, like a burden on their heart to do with like a family member or like a guilt or responsibility around a family member. And so really, you know, opening your heart and being able to receive love and res like receive love and give love um, can, I believe help of course you have to do what you need to do medically to take care of yourself but I also think that the heart chakra you know a lot of times is um, impacting people's health so once again the heart coherence technique you should do it um, regularly because that sinks your heart and your mind How do I connect with my oldest son, who I know is the oldest of souls? Um, you know, I would just, you know, it depends how old he is, I don't know, but you know, sometimes teenagers, young boys, you know, people, teenagers need their little space to do their things, you know? They kind of need it. Of course, they're gonna kind of come back and circle around and love you again, you know? But I know it's sometimes hard as they grow up. Let's see. I don't know what pineapple Sundays are. I have no idea what that is. What are my favorite crystals? Um, I love selenite. Selenite is my jam. That is my crystal that I always, I love. I also like, um, quartz regular clear quartz um it's like an amplifier um i don't use crystals as much as i used to i used to use them a lot more um i haven't used them i have them all over my apartment but um i don't use them too much for anything except for like sometimes i hold selenite um because it just feels so great uh also i like um prionite so prionite is a good one for connecting to other energies you know Oh, felt that way as a child and you were born with it. Mm -hmm. If you're born with it, it might've been part of what you were meant to overcome in this life, you know? So it definitely, that's the thing, you know, also you should look into Louise Hay's work. She has stuff where they give like good explanations about affirmations for certain body ailments to kind of help them. Yeah fall asleep holding your selenite. I love it. It's so comforting. You want to teach this all to your kids? Yeah, you know, you can teach them little by little. Stuff like that book that I read at the end of the soul series, The Little Soul. Stuff like that is a nice way to teach kids because, you know, you also don't want to like, this information is hard to swallow. So, you know, you don't want to overwhelm children with this and not let them just be kids. So, in gentle ways, like the little soul in the sun and books like that are nice. What do you do in life when you feel lost? Um, I meditate. I talk to my higher self, you know, um, similar to praying. Meditating and praying are very similar. They're almost the same. So you just pray, meditate, um, and do that, you know, because... You know, that, sorry, someone said, are you JK? I don't know. Um, so, yeah, when you feel lost, I would say just, you know, take some time, talk to your higher self, go in the bathroom when no one's looking and just be like, please, 
give me a sign, show me a llama in the next day or so just to know that it's going to be okay. You know, be like, show me a green car just so I know it's going to be okay. And give it a couple days and you'll probably see it within the same day. But give yourself a couple days. Oh, thank you. My voice is soothing. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, your oldest son, he swears he's met presidents and speaks like a 40 year old man. Oh, he's probably an old soul. So I would just, you know, nourish him, you know, encourage him. Oh, are you making any new series? Yes, my new series is gonna be about dimensions and the levels of consciousness, but I'm not gonna start it until September. Until then, I'm gonna just do a couple of like other random videos that I've wanted to do. And it's also my birthday month, so I've been super busy. Um, have I seen the movie Soul? I love it, and I think that's exactly, that's a great way to teach it um, to kids. Now, the, I think they stole the idea of Soul from Journey of Souls because there's literally a person in the book who chooses to be a musician in New York and is very similar to that story. Um, but at the end of the day, I loved the movie. Um, and I also, they kind of like took left out the reincarnation part, probably because a lot of the Disney fans are Christian and they didn't want to piss them off. Aw, happy birth month. Thanks. So I haven't really read the Seth stuff, the Jane Roberts stuff. Um, I've never really gotten into it. Oh, thanks guys. Aw, thank you. Um, connecting with past loved ones. Just talk to them. Just get quiet and meditate or pray and talk to them. They're all around, you know? They're always with you. Like, we're never really separate from anyone. Have I heard of the back rooms? No, I don't know what that is. Yes, I did do the tool videos. I love tool too. There was actually so much more to say about that, um, but I was not trying to make it a whole series. But like literally every tool song is a rabbit hole of like spiritual awakening. Oh, thanks guys. <laughs> you wonder if your your past brothers or guides are yelling at you for not listening. Sometimes Moldavite craze. I don't know. Honestly, I wish I would have got some Moldavite back in the day before it got so expensive. <laughs> I regret not getting it. I don't know. They say good and bad things about Moldavite. I like anything from space. So, um, you know, I like the alien stuff. Um, but I should have got it like back in the day because now it's so expensive. Yeah, 10,000 days is great. Aw, thank you. You got some, but nothing changed. I don't know. I don't know if like, you know, what is it going to do? Like, it's really, these things are to assist us. They're not going to change our lives. Oh, thanks so much. I'm grateful for you guys. Anything for connecting to your guides? I'd love to try to connect. I just don't know how. Same thing. Just meditate, take a moment of silence and talk to them in your head. Um, I always, like I said earlier, I always talk through my higher self. I always say like, Please, my higher self, if it is right for me to connect with these guides, to my spirit guides, then you can connect them to me. I always like that kind of extra barrier because it's hard to really know if these people are really your guides or not. Now, the other side of things, you can also connect with your guides and be like, same thing, I like to go through the higher self, but then be like, if you're here with me, give me a sign, show me a green car within the next couple days, or you know, usually you're literally gonna see it within like the next hour or two. But, you know, you might need another type of sign. So you just pick something that you want to be a sign and you ask the universe for that to be the sign and they will show it to you. Like my friend recently, she did this thing where she's like, money flows to me just like pink cars. So she picked that and wrote that down and now she sees pink cars all the time and she's like, this is my confirmation from the universe that money is coming to me. I think you'd be a really funny comedian. Um, well, <laughs> um, I'm not a comedian, but everyone has always thought I was. Um, and I used to actually have a podcast where I interviewed comedians. So I know a ton of comedians. Like I've met like so many, so many, so many comedians. 
My ex-boyfriend is like a famous comedian. So I know a lot of comedians and I've, they've always been in my life. Um, and I always end up, when I write stuff, it ends up being funny that I didn't like, I mean, I meant it to be funny, but I also meant it to be serious, you know? But yeah, it's funny because I literally always, people ask me, so how's stand-up going? And I'm like, I don't do stand-up. I get asked all the time, they're like, what do you mean you don't do stand-up? You told me you did stand-up. I was like, I never told you I did stand-up. I don't. I do that Maynard has a winery in Arizona. I love Maynard. I think he is so great. I actually, one time, Maynard was sitting behind me at an event and I was so excited that I actually was too embarrassed to turn around that I just got super drunk. It was really embarrassing and I kind of look back at it and I'm like, why didn't I just turn around and be like, I love you instead of just getting drunk. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Have you read his book? No, I haven't. I didn't even know he had a book. Why do humans love gossip so much? Because it's juicy. It's so juicy. Um, why do we love gossip so much? Because, I don't know, it takes the heat off of us, you know? Like, it's way easier to look at someone else's pain and suffering and to not look at your own. The copper sticks for communicating with spirits. The dowsing rods. Um, yeah, I like the dowsing rods. I've never tried them. Um, uh, I do believe in them, though. Um, manifestations, did you say it out loud or write it down? I think either. Both are good. Um, do both. Say it out loud. Write it down. But the number one thing with manifestation that you have to do you have to, I mean, visualize it. Some people aren't able to visualize, so don't worry if you're not. You have to feel the emotion of having it already, of it already happening. That is the number one thing that people miss out on the manifestation. Um, you write it down, you say it, but then take a moment and really feel what you would feel like if it happened, if it's gonna make you happy, because most of the time we're manifesting things that are gonna make us feel really good, then just sit there and like, Feel that and then you're really pulling it towards you um, I did a video on YouTube about my astral projection um, you could see it it's called hypnosis and Akashic records but it has my astral projection story in there do you think it's necessary to manifest if you don't feel called to no not at all don't manifest if you don't feel like you want to or have to like no way Do you think deja vu is a past life? Because it happens to me constantly. Okay, so in the soul series, we talked about deja vu. And actually, a lot of times when people are having deja vu, it's because before we come into this life, when we choose this life, we have something called a recognition class, where we basically have a couple of key moments in our lives that we study so that when we're here and they happen, we get this feeling like, hmm, this is weird. I feel like this has happened before. Um, that's because our soul saw that moment happen before we came here. And usually when we're having deja vu, that's confirmation that we're on the right track. Now for me, I kind of haven't had deja vu in a couple of years. I mean, I, I occasionally do, but then there's times where I've had it like nonstop. And, um, so sometimes when it happens, it's kind of like trying to guide you in a direction. But if you're not having deja vu, it also doesn't mean that like you're not, not on the path. It sometimes means like, okay, you're already on it and you've already made the decision and you don't really need that assistance right now. Yeah. Do I practice any modalities? No, I don't. Um, no. Like uh, practices? No. Like witch? No. Uh, no, I don't work with like any deities or any like schools of thought or anything like that. I don't have any loyalty to any school of thought religious, spiritual, anything, um, I follow information. I believe that information is light. So I serve the light, I serve the information, that's it. Like, you know, sometimes I find out information that fucks with my own beliefs, you know? And sometimes I have to process that and be like, okay, I need to be willing to change my belief, you know?
while you're on this path, you find yourself becoming a nihilist. Um, I don't see uh, maybe the conspiracy path. The conspiracy path can make you a nihilist, um, which is why you really do need to dig into the soul purpose and the soul stuff and all of that. Because I mean, if it's only like more on like the conspiracy type of darker side of things, it does make you a nihilist. It makes you feel like, well, what's the point if everything's fucked and rigged and we're in a matrix and there's reptilians and everything's screwed, you know, then you, you know, it is easy to become nihilistic. Do you think it's possible to manifest people back into your life? Why would you do that, hon? Don't take, if they left, they left for a reason. Don't bring no one back because when people leave, they left for a reason. And if you try to call them back, you might prevent your other blessings. Oh, thank you. What are my feelings about what happened with Trump? Like what, the raid? I mean, I don't have much feelings about it. Um, but I do think it is, you know, a little... A little 1984 for something like that to happen um but also uh you know like i said i'm not on either side of the political spectrum it's hard to be spiritually woken when everyone is asleep but that's okay you're here to be the light the light to shine and eventually the light shines and your eyes open because it's shining in your eyes Have I read The Custodians by Dolores Cannon? So that's actually one of the ones that I've only read parts of. Um, partly because I don't have the physical copy and because I have the audiobook, but the reader on the audiobook, it's, and I, you know, I don't like to say nothing bad about Dolores, but the reader on that audiobook is so horrible. It's so horrible. It's hard to read. And also, one of the people does like an ET voice, and I don't know who let them do that because. I don't know why they started talking like E.T. at one point, and it really just bothered me, and I had to stop. However, um, if you read the New Earth and the, the Three Waves of Volunteers, she actually talks about how her stuff in the Custodians really evolved in the New Earth and the Three Volunteers book. So if you are interested in her alien stuff, you could read the physical book of the Custodians or Keepers of the Garden, which actually has a much better reader on the audiobook or the new way the new earth and the three waves of volunteers because that has a ton of alien stuff in it you're curious to hear the et voice it's so horrible it's so horrible you think you get abducted often in your sleep and your husband agrees um it's definitely possible um but the thing is is with abductions um most of them are not like these bad experiences most of the time it's our soul that's contracted to have that experience and a lot of times they're helping you especially um especially you know when you're uh sleeping a lot of times if you feel like you're being abducted or something in your sleep i, I do personally believe it is to help you yeah the reader is just bad yeah the reader is horrible um the voice is annoying in convoluted universe. I don't think those ones are that bad compared to like, you know. You'll be swimming back to your body sometimes. Wow. The indigo children. I do believe in that. I believe the indigo children, the three waves of volunteers, star seeds, all of that. They're all kind of different words about the same thing floating above my bed. Wow. You've heard most abductions are done by grays and that's probably true. Um, physical abductions for sure. Um, and sometimes people call things abductions, but they're actually not. They're just kind of like visitation healings. Um, now when I didn't ask this of the Akashic records, one before I started and like so I, I know I've only talked about this on the lives not in my actual videos on TikTok but like so before I start a series I ask the Akashic Records for guidance on what needs to be in the series the general order of the series and like what is absolutely crucial to be in that series because you know I want to present the information that people need so I asked them to help me get that information, um, not to give me the information because I find it in my books and everything. But um, sometimes, you know, 
something like aliens is a huge topic. There's a million things. And you know, that's really a long series. It's like 40 parts. Even though it says 30, it's actually like 40 because there's all these extra parts and I messed up the numbers. But like, so that was a really long series. I could have still added like a hundred more parts onto that. Um, but I asked the Akashic Records in the beginning, what do I need to put in this series? And they told me. And so that's why I did put all of those things in there. But uh, randomly during that, they told me that that abduction or whatever, that UFO experience that I had as a child was with Grays. And that shocked me because I didn't know, um, you know, and they said it had to do with the hybrid program. So, you know, I don't think the grays are all bad, guys. Do I, can I do a series on um, tart, tart, Tartaria, Tartarians? Um, it's not really my forte. You know, there's kind of like these different schools of thought in, you know, these uh, spiritual communities. And the people who are really into like the Tartarian stuff, they tend to be more towards the flat earth and more towards the prison planet and more towards the don't go into the light. Um, and that's not really my realm of things. Like I said, I have a friend who, he talks about the solar flash and all this stuff and I find his information very valid and he's a great researcher, so I love hearing it. He, he was obsessed with the Tartarians and he sh sent me a crazy amount of information about it. Um, but it's just not really my realm of expertise. I'm not saying that it's not like true or real because the information I have seen is very convincing. Um, but it's just also, I don't feel super called to that information. But I think it's also because I'm more like connected to like the alien soul consciousness side of things, not as much the ancient history. Um, and some people are really good with the ancient history. Mm -hmm. The body changes and the ascension symptoms. Um, I have mixed feelings about the ascension symptoms. I feel like sometimes the ascension symptoms, people are gaslighting people into like, thinking that something's okay when it's not. Um, but then also too, there is like some ascension symptoms. Uh, I don't, I never experienced them. Um, the only time that I experienced it was when I had like practiced some rituals. Then I was like, ah, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't mess with stuff. So I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if sometimes ascension symptoms are people kind of messing with certain entities and kind of getting their energy eaten or something. I don't know. I really don't know. Someone saying that, that there's going to be a new Dolores book. I, I haven't heard about this. What can you do to start having good things coming to you? Um, start every day saying only good things happen to me. The universe supports me. People support me. Creative possibilities are available to me. So you just every day just say, only good things happen to me. Today is going to be a great day. The universe supports me. Everything always works out for me. Exactly. You're right. increased physical pain the day before the full moon or the day of. I mean, last night I got a random pain in like, not even like my jaw. It was like between. And I was like, I had to have some random pains yesterday. Um, but it's not something that I've like noticed happening. Feel the intensity. Yeah. Oh, hey, Marcella. Happy full moon. You guys, here's Marcella Kroll right there. She's amazing. Like truly, she is an amazing practitioner and just like she's been doing it so long. It's really amazing. Um, she also used to have a really cool Oracle deck. Um, Oh, hi, Marcella. She used to have like this really cool Oracle deck. You've probably seen it like all over. I see people all the time doing tarot readings on like YouTube and stuff. And then I'm like, oh my God, that's Marcella's deck. Um, she really has done some amazing, incredible things. So you guys go and follow her. She's great. 
and super knowledgeable. Um, even though she doesn't kind of do like the TikTok like thing like that, you know, she's not here trying to be everyone's, you know, teacher witch, but um, she's amazing. And especially too, check out her Instagram. She's always posting really cool stuff and she sometimes does um, little readings on there. Oh, thanks guys. TikTok scares me. TikTok can be a crazy place. November, Schumann had a major surge of energy. Supposedly timelines merging. The Schumann resonance has been off the hook. Like it has been crazy. It's like in 2020, it kind of like broke the scale. It went high. And then now it's like surpassing that all the time. It's really crazy. And they say that's the heartbeat of the earth. So no, her heart's racing. Triple burst the past few days. Yeah, it's insane. Like first time it happened, everyone was like, oh my God, it was like breaking the spiritual community of the internet. Now it's like, everyone's like, wow, still crazy. I don't know anything about what's going on with the Japanese government. I don't. Do I vape? No. <laughs> I never had a part two to my um, LHC story, but I will maybe look more into some of the stuff with the quantum physics um, and continue that because there is a lot of really interesting information. Um, my thoughts on sleep paralysis. Like I said, I... It's not like my expertise. I've never experienced it. What I've heard, what's in the Dolores books. Um, basically, uh, they say that sometimes you don't come back to your body quick enough. So you're, you leave your body when you're sleeping and sometimes you wake up, but you're not fully back in your body yet. So it's not like anything kind of evil or scary. It's like just sometimes a little bit of a delay. Marcella says, can it be affecting our electromagnetic field? I keep blowing out POS systems and treadmills. I think it is. I think it is affecting the electronics and stuff. Like I, especially too, like, you know, not like the smartphone stuff, especially like the older technology. I feel like that stuff has been frying lately. Lassie fell in the well, not Timmy. What? This can't, that's, that has to be a joke. That can't. Lassie, Lassie wouldn't fall in the well, guys. That's weird. No. What would, well then who saves Lassie? Timmy? Is Lionsgate real or just a TikTok thing? Good question. Um, like I said earlier about it, I've never really seen it talked about before social media. Um, I've never seen it in any of my books. Um, you know, guys, I got a pretty decent collection. Um, I've never seen it. I don't know. Um, but also at the same time, I do believe that there is like heightened energy on those numero numerological dates. So I do think there is heightened energy on something like 8-8, eight, eight, you know? Um, yeah, so I do think that there is heightened energy. I just don't know exactly if that's kind of like a trend. Yeah, new age terminology. Exactly. Like, I think like, um, there is definitely some power in like numerolo numerological dates that are like repeating. Um, I do think that that is like valid, but I, the, the fact that, that it's called a Lionsgate portal, I don't, yeah, I don't know the the bird on King Tut yeah I don't know so like I obviously had that textbook when I was in school that was King Tut's face but we had to cover our books with brown paper bags so it's not like I looked at it every day so I can't really say for sure what King Tut 100% looked like I do feel like that was not there before but it's not as much as some of the other Mandela effects that I feel as confident with Did Dolores Cannon create the New Age? No. No, the word New Age was coined already long before Dolores Cannon. They talk about it all the way back, you know? 
the new age, what does the pink sign behind you say? It says, this must be the place. Um, it's the talking head song. <laughs> yeah, I forgot we used to have to cover our books of brown paper bags, right? The, I'm telling you, we were really like this crossover generation. Yeah, I know. The thing of my past life was very heavy. There was so many things in there. Do I believe it can be done remotely? No, QHT, QHHT can't be done remotely. But there is another method called Beyond Quantum Technique. Sorry, BHT. Someone said it in the chat earlier. Um, it's a different method. That's basically a spinoff of Dolores' method created by someone else. Have I thought of ever doing a meet and greet? I mean, I will eventually, probably. Yeah, BQH, Beyond Quantum Healing or Beyond Quantum Hypnosis. Can you talk about the ayahuasca experience? I've never experienced ayahuasca and I, nor do I plan to. Um, I did say to the universe that if ayahuasca is for me, then bring it to me because you know I am open to trying what is meant for me, but I don't think it will happen. There's been no, and I said that years ago, actually. There's been no indicator that it's coming my way. Oh, you guys. Um, go to the QHHT website, and then you just put in your location. But before you pick a practitioner, set the intention of like, higher self, please help me call in the right person for me and then see who you connect with. Thanks. You like my eyes. They show my intelligence. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how they do, but thanks. <laughs> Any advice for your first QHHT session? I would say don't rush into it because you have to write down questions. And when I did mine, if I would have done it in that first week, I wouldn't have even had half the questions. So take your time with the questions. Also, I have a video on my YouTube called My Past Lives. And in the beginning of the video, I give suggestions on what questions to ask. Interesting that it's been offered to you many times, but you never felt it was right. I think that's good to follow that, you know? Have I done mushrooms? Um, you had a horrible time. That sucks. Um, yeah, uh, I have done them. Uh, I have them here just like, in my kitchen. Uh, I don't use them very often. I use them like almost never. Um, I do like them. I think they're fun. Uh, you know, I hadn't done them for like 10 years. The first time I did it, I broke up with my boyfriend the next day. I also met Robin Williams that, well, no, it was my second time meeting Robin Williams the next day. So that was really nice. Um, the same day that I had broken up with one of my exes, which I loved Robin Williams so much. So it was like such a great experience for me. But um, that was the first time I did it. And then I didn't do it for 10 years. Um, and then, oh, thanks. And I didn't do it for 10 years. And then in 2020, I, um, in 2020, I did them again with some girlfriends in the desert and it was so much fun. Um, it was just great experience. The moon left, by the way, the moon straight up left. We watched it, the moon just went like, and we were like, wait, wait, where's it going? Where's it going? Where's it going? And then the whole night we were like, let's go back outside and the moon couldn't have left. I've never seen the moon leave before. And then we were like, no, it's the mushrooms. No, what happened to the moon? So the whole night we're like, what the hell? Where did the moon go? And so, no, my first experience wasn't bad. Um, it was fine. Uh, then what's crazy is that we were like, no, it had to be the mushrooms. It couldn't, the moon couldn't have left. So then the next day, the next morning, we were all eating brunch. And, uh, <laughs> so my friend's like, I'm going to ask the server. And you're like, we're like, don't ask him. Don't ask him. He's going to think we're crazy. And she's like, no, I need to ask him if the moon leaves around here sometimes. So then the server is like some like, guy you know like and she's like he's like well do you guys need anything else she's like actually um does the moon sometimes leave around here and he's like the moon leaves what do you mean the moon leaves 
or like like out of the sky, like disappears. Um, and he's like, uh, I don't think so. And walks away. Some chick comes running from the kitchen and she's like, I heard you guys talking about the moon. And yes, sometimes it does, but it's actually just behind the mountains and it's so dark that sometimes it looks like it's left, but it's actually just obscured by the mountains. But yes, the moon does leave sometimes. And then these guys at the table next to us are like, we're so glad that she came out and said that because the moon left last night when we were driving in, right in front of our eyes. And then when he said the moon doesn't leave, we were freaking out over here because we saw the moon leave last night and we're just glad that she came out to tell us that the moon leaves. So that was like ridiculous. Like, <laughs> And then also during that same experience on a spiritual level, um, which I thought was great. Uh, so like we were whatever out in the desert at like an Airbnb and then walking back to the house. So when we were walking back to the house, out of my peripheral, and I wasn't really seeing it, but I felt like I was seeing it. Out of my peripheral, I felt like I was walking through like the Museum of Natural History, but it was my life as the exhibits of like myself as a teenager fighting with my mom myself as a child this day and like literally on the sides of my like peripheral it was like these museum exhibits of my life of all these different days in my life and like I was walking and I was walking past all of them and I went back to the house and then afterwards I was like man it's all just a story everything they're all just stories <laughs> and I'm like that's not me. None of those experiences were me. They were just things that happened. My friends were like, uh, <laughs> but I did. It really was. And it really helped me like separate from basically everything that's ever happened to me. When you had that, you almost died. Oh my gosh. How? Um, Oh, you guys. I know, I do want to do a meet and greet so I can meet people, you know, because it's like this whole community is just like, it's been like such like the best people. No, oh, you guys are so sweet. <laughs> yeah, the whole majestic stuff is crazy. Um, even when you kind of look into those names and I can't think of it off the top of my head right now, but one day during those lockdowns, I really got crazy into the majestic stuff. And now there's like another name that they kind of operate under. I can't think of what it is, that it's kind of like a different name and it's a little bit more public and they don't really say that that's exactly what it is. Then you start looking into that and you look at the names of the people who are like members. It's just nuts. Yeah, now that I'm awake, I find random people that are awake. It's true, you call them towards you. Exactly, the grocery store, everywhere. Aw, you guys. Thoughts on Freemasons? Um, I don't have too much thoughts on it. Um, I used to be a little bit more closed-minded about it. I used to feel like they're bad. Um, but... You know, I've become a little bit more open-minded about it, like everything, you know, there's nothing that's all good or all bad. Um, I actually want to do a live with, um, I think his username is Widows Miho, um, and he's a Mason who breaks down conspiracy theories. So I actually want to do a live with him and like a little interview, um, just because, you know, like guys, we got to bring these like things together and like not be divisive. And it's like, imagine if the spiritual and the conspiracy theorists got like, you know, on the same page as like understanding like Masons. And it's like, we could just really stop the division in the world, you know? So I do, um, yeah, they're good people in their communities. They do help their communities a lot. And that's the thing is that like, you know, I, that's the thing is when I have the live with him, I asked him, I don't, I haven't checked my DMs if he answered. I just asked him earlier, right before this, um, right before I got on here. But um, if he does want to do a live, that would be really good because I want to ask him personally, you know, I'm not a member. I don't really know. So I would like to ask people who 
actually experienced it, you know, and of course people will be like, oh, well, he's not going to tell you. But it's like, I mean, he's been pretty candid um, as much as he can be. And so I would rather just have that conversation with someone who has that belief as opposed to like making my whole assumption about it. Have you seen the story of the being who came from Africa in the 60s and got shot and regenerated? Yes, I did see that video. Um, that was very interesting. That was very interesting. That's actually been on my mind since I saw it. Um, and then what he said at the end of that, um, which basically, I don't know, the video, I think it was someone uh, had done it. I think the person in the video said that it was the black Jesus and then like the 60s that there was this guy, that's what he was called like socially. Um, that basically he was like this basically like a super being um, who was in Africa and then basically elite people had heard about him and kind of like lured him to this place and then killed him but then he like didn't die and then they tried chopping him up or something and then he got regenerated and then he told them like you know you're not going to stop us and that there's going to be more like me that's coming um, so that was an interesting story. Uh, I don't know. I don't have any like proof or validation of it. And it's just from something I heard on TikTok, which I think that person said they heard it on David Wilcox page or something. Um, so I don't know. I, or in his book, I don't know too much about it, but I did find it very interesting. Mm, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like it's, it was very interesting. Mm-hmm. Is it okay to feel fear when astral projecting? I, if you're feeling fear, I wouldn't do it because this is the thing you guys have to remember is we're always seeing a mirror of ourselves, a reflection of ourselves. So if you're feeling fear and you go into the astral realm, what are you going to attract? Things that are fearful. So if you're fearing, feeling fearful, don't, it's okay. You know, there's nothing to really be afraid of. But if you're feeling that, you just have to remember that you're going to attract that. So you don't want to do it if you're in a state of like anxiety or fear or whatever. Your husband's an agent Smith and acts that way about your enlightened comments. You know what? A lot of times these people are acting out of fear because they don't want their own beliefs to be changed or they don't want to open up to it, but that's okay. You know, it's really, they're just, you know, hurting themselves, Shut down, shuts down all your theories. Well, you know, when the shit really starts going down, he's gonna be like, babe, what is this about? You know, I have a lot of people who didn't really believe my theories before. And then all of a sudden the last couple of years have been like, so what do you think about this? And I'm like, hmm. Yeah, when you threaten your belief, they're programmed to attack. You are right. Yeah, if you feel like it's like wrong, then definitely. And also too, with astral projection, and I've said this in like other videos before, always protect yourself with white light. You shield yourself with white light always before any type of energetic or spiritual or astral experience. Also, I always suggest doing that heart coherence technique. It could take 90 seconds and all you're doing is making sure that your heart and your mind are linked up in a positive energy. And you were right that everyone is connected. We guys, we've been on this for so long. So I'm gonna probably like leave in like uh, like 10 minutes. So if anyone has um, some other questions, you guys, this has been so fun. I love doing this. I have to just do more. Um, what's the technique? Okay, so the, car the heart coherence technique, it's very simple. You put your hand on your heart, you take a breath and kind of breathe into the heart. So like as you're breathing, you think about the breath kind of getting directed into the this heart area. Take a couple breaths and then you think about a positive memory or feeling or something. For me, I think about cows. Um, I love the cows. They're just, they're just the best. I love cows so much. So I will think about a cow. You could think about your dog, your child, your 
parents, whatever, your mom, you know, if you think about maybe someone said something nice to you, maybe you felt really good about something, maybe you achieved something that felt really good and you felt really proud. You get yourself a positive emotion or memory and you think about it and you just breathe in and think about it until you feel what you're thinking. And then you're good, that's it. You sync up, you sync up your mind and your heart because sometimes your mind is in one place and your body is feeling anxious and you're like, why do I feel anxious? Nothing's wrong, you know? What should be the first step to my spiritual journey The first step of your spiritual journey, hmm. I mean, try meditating, you know? Try meditating. And then, too, you know, think about, like, kind of like, maybe pick someone to forgive. Forgive someone who has done something to hurt you. Aw, thanks, guys. You guys are so sweet. How do I feel about witches? Witches are fine. Witches are fine. I like witches. Um, you know, everyone has different beliefs and modalities and everything. Um, I don't know how I feel about witch talk. Witch talk? I don't go over there. Uh, not because the spiritual stuff, but because they're so, why are they all hexing each other? Why are they all hexing each other and weaponizing ancestors? They act like their ancestors are trying to make everyone sick and kill them. And what the? Like, you know how they say, like, what is the thing? Like, I don't know. Like, if you don't want smoke, don't. I don't know. You don't want the heat in the kitchen. All of that. That's what I'm saying about some of this shit on Witch Talk. I see a lot of people that, um, they're like hexing people proudly on TikTok. It's bizarre. And it's like, okay, sure. Just know what happens with hexing, you know? Don't think you're above consequences. That's all I have to say. And it, I do feel bad when I go over there. When I kind of go, and I know there's a lot of drama on Witch Talk right now, um, and I'm that's not my forte. My realm of knowledge is more towards consciousness, aliens, soul. Um, I'm not someone who I'm, I do know a good amount about the pagan stuff, um, and different types of like entities and demonology stuff, just because I research all types of stuff, but it's not really my place of expertise or something that I'm feel personally connected to. So it's not even about, um, the guy challenging the witches. Yes. That was so funny, dude. Oh my God. That cracked me up. Um, that was funny. The man that was hexed by the TikTokers. Yeah. Oh my God. That shit was funny. Oh, that cracked me up. Uh, and then they were backpedaling. He was like pretending to have lost his house or whatever. And they were like, no, 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 it wasn't me. And I'm like, own it, own it. Because if you're already backpedaling from someone joking about it, you better not backpedal when the real shit happens because these people think that they're working with certain entities. And like I said, it's not my place of expertise. However, like I said earlier, there's no rules in the spirit world about telling the truth. Just like there isn't rules about telling the truth here. You can lie as a human. You can lie as a, as a entity. You can lie as a spirit. They don't have to tell the truth. It's not like there's any rules that like they could present themselves in a way. That doesn't mean that that's what they are. So... There's already an outcome for the hair guy. Well, he posted a video that he said he lost his job and lived with his parents now. And yeah, <laughs> that was cracking me up. What if entities are lying to Dolores and uh, Newton? Well, neither of them channeled, actually. So that's kind of why I like their methods. I do, I do like channeled information. However, I don't only look into channeled information. So with Dolores and Michael Newton, all of their, neither of them ever channeled. They put people under hypnosis and then matched up what kept coming up. And then that's what they put in the books. So for me, 
that was kind of like um that I feel like more comfortable with. So if like all these people who aren't connected because they didn't even publish these books until late in their career. So most of the stuff in their books was already done that no one had ever read or communicated with each other because it wasn't like it was the internet that people posted their experiences. So they had thousands of people between both of them that said the same exact thing under hypnosis. So that to me sounds a little bit more legitimate because it's also not just one person's information. Yeah, the, yeah, the TikTok guy. That was hilarious. Honestly, that was kind of needed because I feel like everyone on Witch Talk was like hexing each other and that guy had to just swoop in and be like, do it to me. Did Dolores con uh, communicate most Nostradamus without channeling? She did it through hypnosis. She never channeled that information. Those were between, well, there was four subjects between the first two books and then there's a couple subjects in the third book. Um, but... Um, and I have read, I've read two of Brian Weiss's books, um, which I said, I like Brian Weiss, but just not as much. Um, yeah, so the Nostradamus stuff, that was not channeled. That was through hypnosis um, of different people lining up the exact same information from him too, people who were not connected to each other. Um, what is your definition of spirituality and witchcraft? The similarities. Um, I think spirituality is an umbrella. Witchcraft is a part of spirituality and witchcraft is like using physical practices. So like witchcraft uses, in my opinion, physical things to manifest. Um, just start a journey of souls. It's amazing. I know it's so good. I love it. You have a suggestion for my Patreon? Tell me, tell me. The Merkaba. Um, so, uh, like I said, uh, I haven't read too much of Drumvalo Machilzadek's work. He's a great person for the Merkaba stuff. Um, I do believe in it. Uh, oh, you're on your way to work. Oh my gosh. Where do you live? Um, so, yeah, the Merkaba is very interesting. It's just not something that... So the Merkaba is basically... So you guys know the Star of David in um, Judaism. It's that six-pointed star. But now imagine the 3D version of it. Oh, you're in Europe. That's why you're up oh, so early. <laughs> so the, um, the Merkaba is like the 3D version of the Star of David. Um, so basically... Um, they say that this is a vehicle for the soul that basically sometimes the reason why people see like white light when they see angels or aliens is it's actually because it's the Merkaba, but it's moving so fast that it just looks like a ball, but it's not actually a ball. It's like a pointed star. Um, Dolores's books are translated into some languages, um, but it's, uh, all self-published. No one would publish Dolores's work and she had to create her own publishing company because of the Delor because of the Nostradamus stuff because Nostradamus told her she had to tell the world. So she had to create her own publishing company. So with the translations, it's all been um, the family getting them translated. So Dolores, surprisingly, when she was alive, was very popular in China. And she had a huge following in China and she was there a lot. And actually a lot of her books are translated in Chinese. She was also very popular in Russia. Um, so she had a lot of her books translated there. Um, she also has her books translated in Spanish um, because I do have a friend that has convoluted universe in Spanish. Um, so it's just that they're not translated into all the languages because it's her family um, who's really in charge of the publishing company now. So they're a small company. So they basically work with people who are willing to, you know, and also a lot of the words are not easily translatable. So she really needs to find people who have an expertise of spirituality in order to translate that. You know, it's not like any old translator will have the exact things. She kind of needs someone who's deep into spirituality. What I think about the Solar Warden Project. Um, didn't the Solar Warden Project like end and go under a different name now? Um, yeah, I mean, that was, you know, a lot of that shit that they're doing. I believe in all the stuff. Those people who talk about the secret space program, I believe in most of it. I do. Um, 
you want to translate it into Hebrew, you should contact her family's um, company. It's Ozark Mountain Publishing. You should contact them because they probably do want it translated to Hebrew. And if you're able to do that, Oh, from the Philippines. Wow, so cool. Have I ever seen a UFO? Yes, I have a whole video about my UFO experience. It landed. And then I found out later that I went on the ship when I went under hypnosis, but. Wow. Okay, guys, well, let's see. Will you drop another compiled series on your YouTube? Yes, I'm working on, I should have done it tonight, but um, I'm working on the Earth Shift. Um, I have it all together, but I haven't done the added commentary. So, um, I'm going to have to do the added commentary, but I think I'm going to put it up and because the earth shift is so long, I'll put it up and then put the added commentary thing. What do I think about Billy Carson? I like Billy Carson. Um, although there is a little controversy around him, um, my friend sent me the pictures of his mug shots. Allegedly he's a con artist and all this stuff. I don't know if I believe that. Um, he claims he was never arrested. There is the mug shots. Um, however... I don't think that delegitimizes his information that he's sharing because a lot of his information has been said by many other people before. So that's the thing too, is that I think sometimes people really like this world that we live in right now, the cancel culture, this, you know, people expect someone to be like Jesus in order to like get information from them. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. They're not perfect. So like, why do we expect people to be perfect? And then if they're not perfect, we try to delegitimize their entire information. Like people talk about Emory Smith on Cosmic Disclosure, or Randy Kramer, or these different things. And they're like, well, that person's an alcoholic. And I'm like, so because someone's an alcoholic, their information is bullshit? Like, hello, we need to stop, um, like, you know, expecting people to be perfect in order, I'm like, guys, seriously, I'm not perfect. So like, if that's what you need, don't get the information here. Don't, because I'm not. You know, I've made many mistakes in my life and I'm sure I'm not done making mistakes. So, you know, if that's like people need perfect, perfect people in order for them to feel that their information is true, then. And also, let me tell you something, as someone living in LA, Every single doctor that I have ever met outside of an office is a douchebag. They fucking do coke at parties. They're like groping women at the bar. I've worked at so many restaurants and stuff at Beverly Hills and I've worked at many different places in Beverly Hills. And you see a lot of these famous doctors, you know, these people who do the Kim Kardashian everything. We saw him all the time. We see these people all the time. I mean, not saying him specifically, but a lot of these doctors, uh, they're so respected and it's like, they are not perfect either. Okay. We see what they do. So it's like, so then what your doctor can't help you because they have a life and they party outside of the office. You know, it's crazy. Oh, yeah. There's no such thing as the perfect man. People pick and choose what's acceptable. It's true. And it's it's really, you know, fake. So to like expect people to be completely perfect in anything and to like expect like a lot of the cancel culture, people act like they've never said anything wrong or made a mistake in their life or been ignorant to something or didn't understand something or might've been insensitive to a person. My neon light says this must be the place. Uh, yeah, my hair is highlighted. Malachi Martin said that Lucifer was enthroned at the Vatican. Yeah, well, he said that um, the smoke of Satan had taken over the Vatican. Uh, and yes, I do believe that. Oh, thanks. What do you think about some aliens trying to capture a soul to determine in which dimension they are going? I don't think that you can capture a soul. Do you have a Patreon? Um, I do. Uh, not yet, but I will. I do want to. Yeah, the cancer culture is mainly children. And that's true. I mean, 
and this is what I talked about earlier on my other live with Astro 5D is that, you know, we also, I get triggered by these young kids canceling everyone, acting like they never did anything wrong, but they're not even old enough to have done much wrong. Um, especially because the internet was already a much safer place by the time they got to it. Um, however, they're going through their learning process too. And I try to remember that like these kids that are like perpetuating this like crazy narrative, they're also learning. And we were also 20 years old once. We were 18 years old once. And we also thought we knew everything. So I try to remember that. Do I like LA? Would I see myself living somewhere else? I do want to move somewhere. I'm over LA. I'm not done here um, because the universe hasn't taken me from here yet because I asked her to and she hasn't. Um, so I do want to move somewhere else, but I don't know what that place is yet um, because uh, I want to go somewhere for a reason. Move to New Mexico. I've been, you know where I really want to go? I want to move to the Earthship community in New Mexico. I really am. I'm very intrigued by New Mexico. Oh, thank you. How do you know about asking? How do you, how do you go about asking the universe for a thing? Just say it. Seriously. Think about things in the past that you said that then came true. You know? Mm, Ventura County. I want to kind of get out of California. I think it's getting a little crazy here. Um, am I into yoga at all? I do it a little bit. Um, I should do it more. Earthship. I love earthships. That is my, I want to live in an earthship community. Come to London. I have a bunch of friends in London. Yeah, the earthships are in Taos. Tao or Taos? The most magical place. See, I keep wanting to go. Ventura City. How do you get over skepticism so that you can actually manifest your 3D? Okay, <laughs> that'll be my last question. Okay, you're not gonna manifest if you don't believe in it because in order to manifest, you need your thoughts, words, emotions, and actions. So if you secretly think it's not gonna work and your heart feels it's not gonna work, you have already are missing half of what you need. Also, the other thing why people have to get over skepticism of manifesting is that people man people think like, oh, I'm going to manifest a million dollars. Oh, it didn't work. Manifesting is bullshit. And the reality of it is like you have to try start small in order to build your confidence in it. So like I said earlier, even with like talking to your guides, um, you talk to your guides and you can ask for a sign. So with manifesting say something like, I want to see a green car and then wait to see how long the green car will pop up. Now for me lately, I've been using something like a llama because it's a little different, but then I'm telling you, I open my phone and it's a video of a llama. So it's like, pick something small and then slowly build your confidence with that. You're like, today I'm going to see a green car. Today I'm going to see a llama. And it, you have to be open to it being in different ways. You could see it on a TV. You could see it on a poster. You know, it doesn't mean a llama walking down the street. You might see a llama on a calendar somewhere, you know, a statue of a llama on someone's desk. So that's the way that you start building your confidence um, with, uh, you know, with manifesting. TikTok reads your mind. It really does. It really, 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 really does. All right, guys. This was so much fun. We've been here like a really long time. I don't even know how long. It is gonna be on YouTube. I also did one earlier today with Astro 5D. So that's gonna be there probably like tonight or tomorrow. And then this will be either tomorrow or the next day. Thank you guys. This has been so good. Thank you everyone. You guys are so sweet. Thanks for your questions and all of your amazing energy. Oh, you guys are so sweet and gifts and everything. And thank you. I know some of you people, some people sent me um, stuff on Venmo too. You guys are so sweet and so generous. Oh, thank you. Bye everyone. Oh, thanks. Yeah, my birthday is coming up. Uh, thanks so much. Oh, thank you guys.
you're late. Oh, don't worry. It's going to be on YouTube. So if you guys did want to catch it, it's going to be super long because I think I've been here for like three and a half hours or something. Um, thank you so much, guys. Oh, thank you. Okay, everybody. Good night. And everyone else not on this side of the world. Good morning. The light says this must be the place. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Have a good one. I will. I'm going to do this more often. Aww.